are listening to Gorgas, you idiot. James, what's up, brother? <laughs> what's you up? Got, that, that intro caught me by surprise. <laughs> right? Idiot, I yeah. loved it. So could start everything with a little quick laugh, a little yeah. sneaky a little, laugh, you and know? just a little dig. Just like, hey, yeah, not, we're gonna knock you down a peg before you say a word. Well, also, it's like this podcast is like, you know, it's not not every episode's dumb. Sometimes I have, sometimes there's some cool, interesting. Like, it's not just like comedians talking about dicks all the time. But for the most oh, part, I, like, then what am I doing? I here? want people. Oh, well, you're right. You're right. We're talking about dicks the whole time. <laughs> no, but uh, I just want people to know, like. Like, this isn't, you know, serious. Like, it's just, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah, thank you, by the way, because I think everyone's taking everything a little too serious. Oh, a thousand bajillion percent. And absolutely. they're not that serious. Yeah. Well, James, Like, thank some you things for... are. Let's yeah. be clear. Yeah, some absolutely. things are very serious, but let's not be serious. Yeah. Thank you for coming on, dude. Thanks for I having me. It. I'm it's excited pleasure to, to meet here. you. I feel like we're vibing as soon as you came in the door. Yeah, but we cool. started geeking out about gear. Like, the fact that you recognize the backpack I had, you're like, oh, oh yeah. that's nice. Like, nice I was like, bag, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Who says that to somebody? I don't know. A complete photography <laughs> dork. Thick tripod, dude. Yeah, somebody with three extra Sony sitting around. Yeah, is who exactly. says that? Yeah, yeah. So, so, uh, so you're a photographer too? Then we were talking. I, about. See, you say that at the labels. Let's not. We just met. Well, Let's I mean, not label if you, this. do you dick around with cameras? That's yes. a photographer. To yes, me. I it's do. the same thing with the comedian shit. Like for the longest time, I was like, I'm just, I'm just an open micer. Like I'm not. You know what I mean? And then they were like, a bunch of people were like, dude, if you're doing it, you're doing it. You know what Dude, I mean? And I okay. still don't feel like you're touching still, a nerve right I now. I still don't feel like a comic still because I respect the crowd. How long you been doing this? A little over a year. So I'm, okay. I'm I feel like I'm just an open micer. That's I'm fine. Just, I'm just trying. How much I, are I'm you so doing? Aware. How much are you up? Uh, you know, I've I've started doing. My goal this year is to get like a solid ten minutes and then um, do more sets. At, well, that's what of, I mean. How many sets a week are you doing? I, I not enough. So what's that? Okay, like this is like, so funny. This I'm is sorry, like one to, one to two, three, four. You know what I mean? If I can, but it's just then I get distracted. I got a bunch of other shit going on. It's just, you know, it's I'm basically still testing the waters and trying to figure okay. it out. So you know, there's a lot of guys. There's a lot of guys out here that are like, their whole like life is is comedy, and it's just and that's know, what I, it takes. And I have a couple. I have a couple other things I'm doing, and so it's like. I'm just kind of trying to get my feet wet and just get my legs up there. You know what so I mean? I'm, I'm staying. I'm, it's funny you brought this up. This is something I have not. I have not stopped thinking about this exact conversation since last night at 3:30 a.m. I'm oh, staying okay. with Derek Poston and his okay. wonderful wife Sam. An absolute, and absolutely great people. Wonderful people. Yeah. Like, and I've known Derek for nine years. Mm -hmm. uh, when he came to San Diego, that's where I was. I think I was like a couple years in when he showed up. He was already a few years in. And we all we had this one crew that we were all like growing together. We were on stage six, seven nights a week together. Like Damn. it was amazing. And and I'm staying at Derek's and seeing what Derek is doing out here is is it just it, my heart glows and I'm like holy shit! Like he and Hassan and Brian. He's said, one like, of my favorites, guys, Derek. He's fantastic. And the beautiful thing with Derek and he has been the exact same since the day I met him is that he if he loves you. He fucking loves you. While at the same time, if he does love you, he will push you. He will push and he will not hold back his thoughts. If you ask, if you're in the conversation. Yeah. And like last night at 3 a.m., because I'm in the same boat you're in. I'm I've been doing this 12 years, coming up on 12 years. The past couple of years. I mean, COVID was whatever COVID was, but even since then, like, I got a divorce. I have a six-year-old daughter I have half the time. I am in Dr. Squatch commercials, and I work with other brands, and that's really mm -hmm. where I make my money is, right. like, I pay rent and pay for my kid to have a life and the security that a child needs through these other things that are not stand-up comedy. Last night at 3 a.m., Derek and I and Sam are sitting in his living room, and, and Derek's just like, how much are you getting up? And I was like, not enough. And he's yeah. like, how much? Right. And I was like, the weekends, or because like, I have my daughter every Monday, Tuesday, and then every other Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So every other week, I have my kid for five days. Yeah. And she's six. And I, I cherish that from a standpoint of like, this is my kid, and she's only going to be six once. I'm not missing bedtime. I'm not missing reading her a book and tucking her in. Good dad shit. It, yes. And 100% yes. Mm -hmm. But Derek hit me with some shit last night. He was like, James, what are you doing? And I was like, what do you mean? When I'm, I'm doing everything I can. He's like, are you? And I was, and the truth is, the answer is no. Right. The, we, the nights I don't have my kid, I don't get up every night. I don't make it a 100% point to go. But even the nights I do, like that's five nights in a row that I'm not on stage, which yeah. is huge, yeah. which is so awesome. And Derek's like, dude, we're, we're doing this shit 24-7. 
and he broke down his life and I was like I get that and he's like you're either you're either doing this or you're not fucking doing this dude and it doesn't sound like you're fucking doing this Damn. like what the fuck are you doing that's a good homie though it's a great homie and he looked he's like dude I'm not your friend I'm not just but this that like I'm not talking to you as a friend I'm talking to you as a fucking comic that's in the middle of this shit mm-hmm. that's doing this shit and on the rise too. and on the ri- and like do- he's doing what in my heart I know I should be doing and I wish I I'm going to say could as if I can't, but in, in everything I said to Derek last night was like, he's like, yeah, yeah, that's a heck of a list of excuses you have right. for not doing this. And I'm like, dude, I got a kid. Yeah. This ki- I'm not missing my kid's life to go do a mic. Also, when I do have my daughter, like I'm, a, I'm divorced. I don't, they're like, I, that's one of the hardest parts is like, I miss having that partner because I think, you know, for me to be on stage now, five nights a week when I, you know, when I have my kid, right. that's a hundred bucks for mm. me to get a babysitter and I miss bedtime. Right. And it's not like she's at home with mom. She's at home with like a, a babysitter. Some random. Not a random. Well, like that's yeah. weird. <laughs> yeah. But it was really interesting because Derek hit me last night and he's like, dude, what do you, he's like, dude, we are all on this pace and we were all on this pace together. Back when back when we were, to, you know, yeah. and then he, he and us on, they moved up to L.A. and they were doing stuff, which even then, like they were they were they were they kept the pace. My pace slowed down because I found this weird little success in commercials. Mm-hmm. And thank God I did because I didn't have any income. And now I have a child because I went from a stay at home dad slash comedian six nights a week to now I'm a 50 50 caretaker of a child. And. I don't they're like I need to pay for rent and I need to pay for insurance and I need to pay for gas and I need right. to pay for clothes for this kid and food. Like, thank God I had the squatch stuff. Thank God I was making commercials and doing these other things because that's what provided the income and the security. But when Derek hit me with his shit last <coughs> night, he's like, James, he's like, he's like, I don't know what the fuck you're saying. Cause I told him I was like, hey man, this is where I'm at. I'm not at the pace you guys are at like my frequency and your frequency are two different frequencies. And I've come to terms with the fact that my journey is definitely different. It's going to take longer. It's going to take. And part of me was like, I'm fine with that. Yeah. I'm on the ride. I love every day of my that's ride. How I feel my right ride now, yeah. is fucking amazing. But Derek's on this ride. That's a fucking like he's on the launch pad. Oh yeah. He's doing arenas he's, with Schultz. He's doing arenas with Schultz. He's opening for Rogan. Every, like, Crazy. He's at the mothership in the middle of it in the green room with the greatest comedians that have ever walked the earth, and he's so fucking in it. And he's lubed up too, like he's like his. And that's what he yeah. said. He's like James. What the, he's like, you're not on stage, dude. What the fuck are you doing? He's yeah. like, he's like, are you telling me you're ready right now to fucking follow Chappelle? Are you ready to follow Joe? Are you ready to follow Schultz if he walks in? Da 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 da. No. And I'm like, no. <laughs> and in my head, I'm no. And he knows I, I. I didn't have to answer. He knew. Right. And it was just this thing that he planted in my head, and I re- and it was fuck, it was it was a hard conversation, and I loved him for it. And we hugged it out afterwards because, like, dude, thank you for your fucking kindness and mm-hmm. your friendship and your truth. Like, you real. you dropped this shit on me, and he was like, dude, he's like, you're telling me that like, oh, I'm on, you know, I'm doing these things, and I'm on this, and I'm not getting up, but I know, I, but I will someday because that's how my brain my brain feels. If I can get the other things in the right place, like you, you have these other yes. app, you know, revenue yeah. streams and whatever. If I can get those in place to the point, then those things will allow me to then get the babysitter every night after I sure. tuck the kid in and go do a late set every single night. And I'd love to get to that. That's fucking 700 bucks a week. Yeah. That's you know, true. that's, that's crazy. it's fucking money. Yeah. And that's a lot of goddamn money. That's a lot of investment for something that for, with, to go do no eight re- minutes no at a turn. <laughs> well, but that's the well, thing. Well, it's no not monetary, the no return. No that's it, that's equal for a comic to going to the gym. And that's what he's, he's right. like, James, you're literally in your head. He's like, you're competing with guys that are living this 24 seven. Yeah. So when you tell me you're just going to like pop in when you in and out, he's like, I'm living and breathing this, and all the guys around here are living and breathing this from the moment they wake up to the moment they go to bed. They are doing ev- sets every single night all over town, multiple sets. He's like, and you're over here popping in and out. Yeah. He's like, you're. N- what are you talking about? How are you ever going to compete with this? And he drew this picture in my head, and I went and I laid down. Like we had a conversation. I went to bed. They went to, bed, and I just I laid there for like an hour, being like, what the fuck am I doing? I like, fuck. But also, I don't know how. I don't know how to do that. 
And it hit me because in my head I had it all figured out. I'm on my ride. My ride's going to be different. My yeah. trajectory is going to be a slower build, and I'm fine with that because I'm also making memories with my kid. I'm going camping with my kid. I'm taking my daughter sailing. I'm doing all these beautiful things that I want to do with my child mm -hmm. who, is, who is more important than me. Their life is more important than mine at this point, and their life is more important than my dream at this point. But I'm also the luckiest asshole in the world that, like, I have these opportunities. You don't have the full-time job. Kind I'm of not a nine-to-fiver. Like, nine -fiver. like yeah, I get yeah. to make commercials. I get to consult companies. I write scripts, and I put together teams to do that. And, like, because of that, I get to drop my daughter off at school, pick her up at 2 o'clock, go to the playground. You get to be, go, you get to be the best I get to be the ever, super dude. fucking dad, dude. Yeah. I, like, the, I am the That's luckiest dope. because, like, and she just started school. Before this, for the first five years of her life, when we were together, all I had to do was be dad. Yeah. All day long. We'd wake up, we'd go to the playground, we'd go for a walk, we'd grab breakfast, we'd go to gymnastics. After that, we'd go to the beach, we'd go for a bike ride. Did it, like, all I had honest, to do was be dad. You're selling dad to me. I'm not, dad I don't is have, the best. I don't have a kid uh, right now, and it's not in the, it's not in the, the you know, projection right. right now, but that sounds dope. You're Dude, selling dad, dad to me dad, right now. And you should, like, I will sell dad all day because dad, like, I love it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only thing I think I'm I'm equally is is talent. The talent is there is like comedy and dadding. Did you have a like, good dad too? That did I had all that. A, cool I had shit? a great dad. I had the best. My dad. dad took me. My dad took my brothers and I. Like we grew up in the summers in a motorhome traveling the country. My wow. dad had. He got us in the flying radio control. He had an airplane. I had my. You know, I soloed Sick. a glider when I was 14 because I could land the family airplane when I was 10. He got us in the sailing in the summertime. Wait, you we could used... land the family airplane. Yeah, the family the airplane. Yeah, we had like a small, like little Are you single really engine. Rich kid, Jay? No, we were like we were upper middle class. You had a plane. Planes were much cheaper then. <laughs> My dad bought his plane for fifteen grand. It doesn't sound okay, like that. Okay, yeah, that's you know, actually we, that's, that's and an it was used. Plane. That was the thing with my parents. My parents did like pretty well, but then they were like they didn't spend money the way people spend money. My parents could have both driven BMWs and done whatever, but no. My mom drove a minivan that she got a new one every six years, and my dad bought a used station wagon. And our motor home was a used motor home with duct tape on the side because they were like, we don't give a shit about it's that about the stuff. experience. Exactly. Yeah. So he bought like you know it wasn't the best airplane, but it was an airplane and we flew in it and as kids we lost it when i was like 10 it was in hurricane andrew wiped it out but That's in south awesome, florida though. but like i look back and i'm like my dad was amazing i knew i was loved i knew i was cared for and i got to do all these things and that's why i am the person i am now and so i see my daughter i'm like that's the important thing and i will get to the place where I can tour and have a fan base and do all those things right. and it's going to be a very different journey than Derek's and Hassan's and Brian, you know, whatever, but we're all on a different journey. Yeah. And, but when Derek hit me with that, he's like, dude, you're, you're going up against guys that are doing this 24 seven. Yeah. He's like, how the fuck are you ever going to compete with that? And that hit hard. That's true. And I was like, That's I, true. I, and, and I get like the excuse or the, the justification in my mind is like, I'm on a much slower path yet. My path is paved with Tons of quality time with my kids. Well, and your t your path is also paved with a lot of opportunity to go get that stage time because you don't have to be up at seven a.m. to go to work or whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like you cut. We we are and now this your situation, like you were saying uh, when you brought it up, speaks to me because it is very similar. You know what I mean? Just in like. We're just not, I'm not putting in, it really comes down to the work and I'm not putting in it. I'm not putting in enough right. work if, I'm I, really, not if I really want this, which, you know, I found out, you know, the first couple of mics were rough and then you have that good one, you get that hit. You know what I oh, mean? Yeah. Where like you get some laughs, you're like, ooh. You do your first like spot at a show, your first little five minutes, I was barking for a five minute spot mm -hmm. and then, you know, you're paying your dues and it finally you get, you, you have some material down and it, you're like, damn, I actually fucking got some, some little pops and you're like, I want to grow i want that to grow i want to get better but it's like it's like you gotta you gotta put the work in and i think it comes down do you think it comes down to organization of time then because like it, mm. it, is it like you can you we have the time and it's there you can do it but then well but like it's in your what's situation, the rest it's of it different it's bandwidth yeah it's bandwidth yes like 100 percent, and that's i mean that's not a fair to say this to say it that way you know 100 percent of derek's bandwidth is comedy his hard drive space is only comedy. Only comedy. Yeah. From morning to night. Like, the, the RAM is full of comedy. That's it. Yeah. And he's got a wonderful wife that is incredibly supportive and also a comic. So, so they're funny. doing it together. Um, yeah, Sam's hilarious. And and where I'm on this thing, we're like, well, 50% of my bandwidth is a kid. Mm -hmm. Literally half my time, there's a child mm -hmm. whose needs come before mine. 
And then the other 50% of the time, it's making sure I still get to make commercials, making sure there's money coming in because that's where the money is that pays for everything. For kid, for For kid, comedy, for life, for, for comedy. Whatever, yeah. yeah, for, I mean, you know, on a, on a weekend when I do get asked to like, hey, you know, if, you know, I will get a babysitter if like one of the clubs hits me up in, in San Diego and is like, hey, Attell's in town, will you open for him? Yeah. Yeah, you goddamn, yeah, yeah. What, what does it pay? Sure, that'll almost cover the babysitter. You're like, gonna have fine. to tuck yourself in tonight, honey. I'm... <laughs> yeah, and that's fine, but like if it's, but if, but, and I think that's where the, the separation is. It's like, yes, I will do that to go have that weekend because one, I'm doing 15 minutes I'm working with a tell for an entire weekend. That's like fucking real comedy shit. Yeah. Where am I going to spend a hundred dollars to have a babysitter come to the house so I can go do eight minutes at you know one club and then hit an open mic afterwards? Right. Which the truth and is, performing that's the gym. Yeah, that is the that gym. is the gym. And I need the workouts because, <clears throat> and that's the thing that that really hit home for me was when Derek did say that he's like, he's like the rate at which we're going here because we're all fucking in. Mm -hmm. We are in like when when Derek left San Diego, that our whole group, we were all we had all kind of risen to the top of San Diego and we were all right here and we were learning and growing together. And then Derek and Hassan got to to L.A. and they were door guys and store and all that stuff. And like they I mean, I saw it then and now fuck it, they are they're oh, monsters. Crazy. Dude. They are leaps like it. It it hurts my soul a little because I feel like I'm wasting potential. Because I see them and I'm like, I, I, I could be right there with them. I could be in the ballpark and with you these were. guys. And I was. Right. And then I had weird, I had this other side success. Right. You know, and then all of a sudden like, oh, our bills are paid. Like we have some money in savings. We're out we're of chilling. We're chilling. We're yeah. chilling. Well, chi I don't like chilling okay. because chilling gets lazy. And, and right. I've caught myself there too. Or like everything's fine. Like comfort. I forget. I think it was Chappelle that said like, you know, everyone's funnier when they ride the bus. And I think there's truth in that. Like you get comfortable and you're like, eh, I don't yeah. feel like doing a thing. But it is interesting now that I see like, oh, these guys like we're so different now in the standpoint of like where we're at with the comedy. And it's not that I'm not funnier. It's not that but they like he said, he is so locked in. Yeah. He is so in it His wheels all are the greased. time. His wheels are greased all the time. Ready. What do you want to do? You want to go on tour with Schultz? You want to open fucking stadiums and theaters? Easy. Done. Yeah. Done right now. Where I, uh, I'm not, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not prepared for that. And yeah. I know that. And that makes me a little sad. But also I'm like, it's, it's such a tough situation. And he was just saying like, he's like, you know, people do it with kids, man. Like, what are you going to do? You're going to not do this? Are you a comic? Or are you not a comic? And I was like, dude, he was giving you the business. Dude, it was the, the real business. Talk. It was like 30 minutes of like hard shit. Like there was part of me at one point, I was like, do you want me to leave your house? <laughs> like, do, like, like there was this part of me is like, do you feel like I'm not taking this serious enough that you feel like I'm dragging you down because I'm here? Yeah. And that wasn't the case in any way. Sure. But like, but it was beautiful. He just wants you to succeed. As he wants his friends. He does. He wants his friend, his homies up there at the top. Yeah. He wants everybody at the table when yeah. he's eating. And I'm not. I'm not. I'm not at the level anymore yeah. with these guys. And and it breaks my you, heart. You'll get there. You'll get there again. Well, that, and that's the hard part. Like that's how I see. It. And I understand his the philosophy he has because in his mind he's like this is the only way. Name every big comedian you know. Name every. They sacrificed everything to do this. Yeah. And I, I, that is a true statement yeah. in, 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 in different capacities. That's a true statement. I look at it, and this is my justification because, of course, I have to justify my own existence. I look at it and go, every highly successful comedian you know got really successful at comedy and then branched out to other revenue streams because they could, right? right? I got weirdly lucky that somebody saw me do comedy, gave me an opportunity that created a new revenue stream to support the comedy, because there's no money in comedy, right? Right. And so now I'm in this weird place where I have... You're not riding the bus anymore. I'm not riding the bus, and I have opportunities to create little revenue streams to provide for the tribe, provide for the kid, provide for, the, you know, mm -hmm. all the things and the security. Security is the big... Like, once you have a kid, you realize that the word security is so much more important than you ever realized. Um, and so now I look at it like I'm doing mine backwards. Yeah. Everyone else fucking killed themselves, killed themselves in comedy, that it got to the point. And then they got to the point where, like, they had the security because of the comedy. Yeah. And now they're they buying restaurants they and they're opening company. this thing. Yeah, yeah, shit like that. Where I'm in the space of, like, no, no, no. If I can square away some shit here, I can make sure that there's some revenue coming in at all times forever that then allows me to really focus. Mm -hmm. And I think it's such a juxtaposition from Derek's 
mindset from maybe the traditional the tra- comedy traditional and path. And so there's part of me. It's like I 100% get what he's saying, and I feel a little heartbroken because I think he feels like like my friend gave up or my friend's not doing it. Yeah, I don't know if it's all. I don't know if it's like. I think it's just a pep talk. I was feeling it was a hell of a pep. It was an emotional pep talk. I'm about to have that pep talk with my bandmates, and I don't know if they listen to this much, but, but like I was just talking to him about it because he just moved here, and I was basically saying this similar thing, but not with. He's not a comedian. I was just like, you know, Mm -hmm. you want to live your life, you want to do things, you want to grow. Like what? What are you doing in Portland? There's nothing going on there. The weather sucks. You're miserable. You know, move. Mm -hmm. And and the guys, my band. I'm in a metal band and shit and. We we just uh, last year went on our big our biggest tour. A big band that we grew up listening to plucked us to go on tour with them, take us to Canada, all over the U.S. I'm that's the you know I'm I want we won we 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 got our 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 shot, and then we're like waiting for music to come out. They're just sitting. They're going to the same bars, doing the same stuff. You know, it's like and and it's like, don't you guys want to be musicians? Come to a town where music matters. Are like, they what, like? Why are you? And they're they're not. You know, they're not playing shows that. You know, it's like they're not doing other music stuff. There really. I mean, one of them is in a, a, a another bigger band now. That's like he's doing fill in work or yeah. he's like the new permanent fill in. But it's like, and that's cool. And they're gonna go on tour and stuff. But it's like. You know, they want to be musicians. One of them's a music teacher. Uh, one of them, you know, one of them, all he does is just play drums. You know what I mean? And it's like, why don't you guys move to a place where you could be in five cover bands and you can make a living doing music here? Yeah. And then we can go on tour whenever you want. You don't have to worry about working at the restaurant or whatever. Are they like pretending to be rock stars when they can kind of? Because I, I, I knew know. a guy that, that I don't think so. He no. told me he was in a bunch of bands and he was like, he's like, I was in five different bands from age 15 to 23. He's like, we got, I got three of them signed. We were mm-hmm. on tour with multiples. I produced our own tours, da, da, da. He's like, and every time we got a little bit of success, he's like, the rest of the guys are just, they were just living it up as if they were already made it. I think we and definitely. And he's like, they didn't have the drive to do yeah. the work. Yeah. I think we definitely had like some of that when we were like a local band that was mm-hmm. really killing it, doing four or 500 on our right. headliners. And it it's was nice like, to be the big fish in the little pond. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And then, so, you know, we're, it's like, you know, if we were together out here, I told them kind of a similar thing, which is like, or I was talking to my, my drummer and it's like, he's like the one that wants to move the most. And if anybody would, it would be him mm-hmm. first. And it's like, you know, we're I'm I'm gonna keep doing this with you guys and we're gonna be successful we've already seen some success I'm doing other shit I'm I'm networking you know we're gonna we're gonna be successful it's just about how quick you want to get there you know what I mean because if you because because if you guys aren't here uh and we're not doing stuff together then then it's just gonna take longer you know what I mean and the yeah. shows are gonna be sp- spread out more and the uh, the mu- you know the music we're not together to make all the time and hang out like we like usually have been which you know when we were together hanging out we kind of have gotten more done since we've been apart because it was just kind of like we'd get together we're gonna you know we're gonna fucking work on stuff and you right. just get, end up working on stuff for five minutes you get drunk or have fun you know because we love each other we like to hang yeah. out you know <laughs> but it's like it, I don't know it's it's uh, I don't I don't have the answer but I just know that if they were here that that success would come so much faster we could we could tour you know we could hit the east coast real quick because we're in Texas we could right. hit, we get the west coast we could hit central we could just stay in Texas do little regionals and you could make some money going you know we, our best shows that we've made the most money off have been here in Texas you know what I mean so we're kind of like a weird Texas Portland band like we have like a <laughs> we're like regional to both because yeah. I live here now and I have you know we I have a little a platform here and it's like so I, I don't know. It's, it's it is that same thing where, you know, if they if they want it, it's like you're gonna have to come get it if you guys want it. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it's because ain't nothing happening out there. There's no there's no like making this dream work in that place right now right. at this in this in this time. Maybe 10, 20 years ago, you could be a band from Portland and blow up. But really, the only bands that blew up, no metal bands are fucking huge from Portland. You know what I mean? Or whatever. And it's like. And so if you if you guys came out here, we could be, you know, kind of starting over the local grind here, opening up for big, big bands when they come through and then like, you know, getting on little regional runs, but playing festivals and shit. But it's like there's nothing going on out there. And so it's kind of it's like you you need to be in, in a place, um, you know, where where it's actually happening. where it's actually happening. Yeah. And I feel like I've run into that. Like I San Diego was a fantastic place to come up because mm-hmm. like, we had just so much stage time and good stages and good crowds and stuff like that. Yeah. And now it's like it's like, but I, this isn't where you make it from. Like then that's right. my thing. It's, it's like, either, and I'm there because my kids there, my ex wife's there. That's where that is. Well, yeah. And it's L.A., New York, and Austin, basically, right? And even then, it's really just here, kind of. 
Sorry. I mean, L- LA is its own thing. New- I think it's for straight comedy. It's New York, Austin, sh- sh- Chicago. <laughs> um, and LA, I mean, LA is its own thing because it is so. It's like it's the Hollywood version. It's yeah. you know, it's the acting and the the writing and the you know all that kind of you know with it. Um, but like, I mean, I would be here in a heartbeat. It's, sure, like, it's but, just not possible with a child and an ex-wife that lives there because I'm not leaving you, a kid. Do you think though that maybe that the whole grind of everything though, like in a way, it kind of is your riding the bus, maybe? Like, like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, like because a lot of these, you know, comics that like, you know, it's like uh, th- that have just grinded and they just do it, you know, twenty four seven. Like Derek and stuff, they don't have the kid, right? They have zero responsibility yeah. besides comedy, which is by design. You know, right. I mean, that's and they, they set and, that I, up. and I had that they life. Set that up. And I was in that for the longest time. I was a totally broke comic, you know, like in San Diego. Like, that's why I moved there, to be poor and do comedy. And fucking, I loved it. And it was most amazing. Those first five years with that crew and then was just, it was, I mean, it it wasn't, I mean, yeah, it was like the best years of my life from the standpoint of I met some of the most, I was hanging out seven nights a week with the funniest people I'd ever met in my entire life. We were all going through this thing together. We were all learning and growing together. It was just this beautiful bonding time of growth, and it was hilarious. Yeah. And and now it's just different. And now I have these responsibilities. I mean, it's really the one. It's the it's the child. It is this thing. And I don't – it's not a blame because Derek was like, are you saying – you know, is she the reason you're not going to – I was like, no, but she is the reason that I can't drop everything. Yeah, and that's okay. That's okay. It, yes, That's and okay. and what's interesting is I think you know like you the day will it. come because because he made he made a point he's like dude he's like you know there are comedians that have kids and they went all in like you're not going all in you sh- you need to go all in I was like yeah but I'm not going all in for me that would put her in a detrimental situation. Right, or make her grow up with a dad that's half there, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want right. to be the dad that comes in once a month. Because you had, you as far as dad goes, you I had. had a good dad. You got to give your kid everything that you didn't. The have. The better version. Well, you got to give your kid everything you didn't have, right? And it sounds like you had a lot. This that, is something yeah. I've been thinking about when having kids comes into my mind. It's like, damn, that bar is high. It is. You a know high what bar. I mean? For me, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, fuck. You know, we didn't. I didn't grow up poor. I'm, I'm gonna have to be rich if I, you know. We didn't grow up poor, but it's like I'm gonna have to fucking have some right. some cash if I want to give my kid everything I didn't have. Right. You know, because I had a lot. Your boy had yeah. a lot. You know, and so it's like, it, it's, and so yeah, it's like you you can't you can't sacrifice her life to you know. Right. I mean, my and and also as weird as it sounds, and this is maybe what you know, Derek is so focused in on on the pin on like. He's so in it, and he's in the highest level. Like, he is yeah. at the highest level of the sphere. Mm-hmm. I don't even know if that makes sense. But, like, I think you, like he's in the fucking thing. He's doing arenas with Schultz. Exactly. That's it. That's all he's he worldwide. Yeah. He's so in it at the highest level that in his mind, he's like, if you're not doing this, like, you're not fucking doing it. Cool. And I totally get that. But that's not going to be my journey. And it was hard because in my mind, I'm like, I know I'm not doing enough sets. I know that I'm, like... I'm not fresh. Mm-hmm. Like you go five days without getting on. That first time you get on, you're fucking struggling again. Like, I feel you're like I'm starting over. Coming. I feel like I'm exactly. completely. St- I might as well go up for the. It might as well be the first time I ever did it. Especially, I don't know about, yeah. Well, especially for me because yeah. I'm a year in. You know what I mean? Like for I'm me, it's to, like yeah. it's like oh, I got you know when I don't have my daughter, I have five days in a row, and I'm da 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 da. I'm getting on stage. I'm doing a yeah. weekend. I'm doing six shows in a weekend. Da, da, well, you're and here. I feel you're I feel, here, right? And that's the beauty of me coming here. And this is what, and when I told him, I was like, dude, like me coming here has so much to do with like I did three sets last night. That's yeah. more sets than I did last week. How did they go? How did you feel about them? Uh the first one was uh the first one was great. The first one was good. The second one I felt like I didn't there's like there's like a a le- there's a a thing you hit where you're like in your head you're like I'm fucking eating shit. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, they are laughing, yeah. but they're not laughing like you know they could be laughing. Oh, and so okay. I did 10 minutes at at like sunset and it wasn't it wasn't to the caliber I wanted that it to room's be. Kind of weird. Not to that make room excuses. Eats. No, no, no. And we talked about that. And Derek and Sam both said that they're like that room. Like uh, the the gaps between laughs are very quiet. Yeah. That you can feel the gap. Mm-hmm. And so I got laughs. Right. I had great laughs. You kind of have to find the comfort in that awkwardness. Yeah. Though, right. Yeah. Which is also a thing that if you're doing it all the time, if you're hitting that stage like they are mm-hmm. every single night almost, you're. Your comfort level in the discomfort is way higher than mine. Where all of a sudden you're like, "Oh man, it's really quiet." Yeah. Here. Do and I that, suck ass? 
yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You start thinking like you start worrying. You start and you're like, oh my god, I'm eating quick. shit. This is my first night here of the week, and this is going to set the tone. Like you know, right. and it's like, no, no, they're not even worried about that because they're so in it. They're like, yeah, this is this room, this is this place. I got these fuckers. Like right. da da da. So it it's like I feel like I I get those reps in. And I do five nights in a row, and then five days go by where I don't get to get up. And then the next time, like if whatever I climb, I'm knocked halfway down. And so each time I'm, you know, I'm taking five steps forward and then three steps back, and then five. So I'm gaining slower. Yeah. Where Derek is just so, rising. So, what? so this week though, but okay. sorry to finish no, 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 that thought. Austin, for me, when I'm here, and this is the beauty of it, when I'm here, I am in the 100% focus. Yeah. Because I don't, I'm not worried about my kid. I'm not worried about the house. I'm not sure. worried about cleaning. I'm not worried about the laundry. I'm not, the only thing I have to focus on here is hanging out with my funny friends where when I, it's funny, when I come here, I, I end up in this like creative, like mindset mm -hmm. where like I write more here in the seven days I'll be here. This is my fourth time coming out. Yeah. And I will do more writing in those seven days than I did in the past four weeks. Because all the distractions of everything else right. are not well, here. Well, all the worries and the stress. That's right? what I mean. Yeah. yeah. So it's like all like when I'm here. You're and not that's in survival mode. Like I need to raise baby. You exactly. know, like, I need to feed child. I need to. Yeah. I need, I need to, to pay rent. I've fire. got to send yeah. emails. I've got to do this. I've got to, you know, what the school needs me to drop a thing off. And then to, like, yeah, there's so much. And when I come here, it's just very much like now, like here I laser focus. Right. And and I love that. And but it was interesting because I think that was kind of Derek Singh is like, yeah, but like you popping in the town and you just think you're going to like pop in and be here with us. Yeah. He's like, and the truth is you're popping in. You're you know, you coming in and out of this and you might come in a little higher every time you come in or whatever. Yeah. Or you might come in. But and get they're that little... accelerating at such a rate. Right. That that I think that was his point is like, dude, we're like you I don't. I don't know if he meant it like this, but it felt like it at one point. It's like, I don't know if this is going to work, man. Yeah. Cause well, so that was what I was getting at is like with all this conversation about this, like what's the message here? Is the message that you're fucked and that you're, that you can't Not do a it? real comic. Or, or is the message that like maybe we'll see if the path is different and it, and you can. Well, the path can, is. Well, yeah, maybe, excuse me. Maybe we'll see if the different path can work. Like, you know what I mean? Like, because because that's the thing. It's like, no, and I, I kind of feel the same thing about what, what I'm doing. Because it's like, I you and I both kind of like, nobody has this path, really. Nobody was in a metal band, uh, started doing a podcast on right. Twitch, got into stand-up through podcasting. That's weird. Mm -hmm. That's that weird. weird. My, that's I, have a we, I have a weird fucking path. And I'm starting, I'm, I'm hitting mics. I had last year, you know, probably six or eight months out of the year i was going really hard every night mm -hmm. and then you know i started to like it started to like not i started getting worse somehow because i yeah, was like because the mics were just brutal and then i had to follow cam one time at the creek mm -hmm. and and i just i i didn't eat shit my buddy is a, like a 10 year con you know michael ridley uh, I'm bad with names. But yeah, probably, he met yeah. you, I think, okay. uh, one time. He's the one that told me, like, you know, about Oh, you. gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, he he told me I survived. Like, I got I, I got through my material and I survived. Sometimes but he was it like, is but that. He was yeah. like, but he was like, you know, you got work to do. You know what of I mean? Course. So he kind of gave me the same. Yeah. And I and he was like, you know, he, he'll, he he's he's my Derek in that situation where he, mm -hmm. you know, we do a podcast together and stuff and, and I he knows that I want to do this. And, you know, he'll be like, I think you need to get to work. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just like, and it's good which to is have what, a friend that that will just fucking yeah. give it to you straight yeah. like that. Which, which is what you should like. Every new comic, like anytime you you know you do shows enough, people start acting like, hey, I've always thought about what does it take you get on stage? Yeah. And I know that. And if I if if somebody else came up to me and they were like, hey, like you know, I'm doing comedy, I'd be like, how much? And that's why I asked you, right. like, how often are you getting up? If I told if that person told me the same number that I have to say, mm -hmm. I'd be like, it's not enough. Right. And I know that. Yeah. I know and you know that. what's crazy? You don't get, you don't have those friends in music. They don't exist. That's interesting. They yeah. don't exist in music. It's, it's very different. It's a yes man participation trophy industry. Good job for trying. You mm. know, your mom's there. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, and even like you're lucky if your own bandmates don't be like, dude, that sucks. Re, re, retract that. Really? Yeah, Everyone's just dude. Good, you're, it's good you're, enough? A you're lot of lucky. good enough? Well, there's just a lot of dudes that don't know how to communicate, and they're all just in it to try to get pussy. They don't want to make the they don't want to make the, the, the best thing possible. Right. Luckily, my band has always, we, we grew up in high school. They'll fucking tell me when I suck. You know, even when I'm like, geez, guys, you're like, come on. You know what I mean? It wasn't that <laughs> yeah, bad. Yeah, be nice about yeah, it. Yeah, no, but like, 
like that's that's such a thing that I lo- that's why I love that's why I I love the realness of like comedy and comedians. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you're is. not going to get somebody that goes good set, bro. And you know and what I mean. The like, other thing is like with music, and this is part of that I kind of envy of music is like you can practice that song <laughs> in a room by yourself five hundred times, yes. so you can nail it, yeah. and then you go perform it. It's easier in that way. It, it yeah. Where comedy is like, I wrote this idea. Yeah. I have to go do it in front of people. My drummer guy that I told you about, he's actually in town. He just got mm-hmm. here yesterday, and we're gonna pop his his cherry uh, with uh, with an open mic because he's been like talking about wanting to do it forever. <laughs> yeah, and he's he's trying to. I think he knows what he has to do. He's not stupid, but I think he's using musician brain to yeah. try and yeah. I'll take a little hit. He's using musician brain to try and ju- and and it's figure this out. Yeah. So he's going to open mics and sitting in the corner, you know, and watching and and it's like, dude, you need to get up yeah. there and fucking do it. You're funny. You you're you're a you know you're a you're, you're a offensive piece of shit. You have like horrible things written down in your phone that you need <laughs> to say in front of people yeah. and just get your get your nuts. Yeah. And he's used to being in the back. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, with, well, and- I think a lot of you'd be surprised how many comics started out that way. Like, I knew guys. I hopped right in, but I hopped in later in life. I was thirty when I really started, and the first time, ten years before that, is the first time I ever did an open mic, and I did it, and it went really well, and it scared the shit out of me, and I didn't do it for ten years. Damn. And which is not a normal story, but. It was like in my mind, I got off that stage and I was like, how am I ever going to do better? Like this, that yeah. was crazy. And, and what's funny is now looking back after doing this for 12, 10, you know, 11 years, I did really well. But now looking back, I'm like, it wasn't that good. Like it was right. good, sure, but it wasn't like bring down the house. I didn't fucking murder. Mm-hmm. But like for never doing it before, I got a lot of laughs. It was whatever. But I knew a lot of guys that they wanted to and they like went to open mics and sat in the back for Right. A year? I have a couple friends. Voyeurism. For a year. And now they're great. I'm not going to say names, <laughs> sure. but now they are on their way and doing things in L.A. and stuff like that. But, like, they sat in the back and just were like, I just want to see how this works yeah. for a while, which I get. It is also terrifying to get on stage and try yeah. to be funny. A lot of people, like, do not understand the thought process. And, what, yeah, what's what's and what's and interesting for me about, like, the – the difference between the music and the comedy thing is like every time that I've ever been on stage for the last 10 years before I started comedy, I fucking, everyone told me I crushed. There was never feedback. <laughs> hey, dude, you could have screamed that a little better. I'm the front man of a fucking yeah. metal band. A little pitchy. I, I a little get, pitchy, I, bro. I get, 500, I get 500 people off their feet right away. Like, if you told me there's... That's there an energy. T- if you told me there's 10,000 people out there, you know, like, hey, dude, you're on in five. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, sign and me I, up. Yeah, I yeah. will crush a stadium right now with fucking metal. I don't care. Mm-hmm. It's like, because I'm used to that. Yeah. But then you get up in, at an open mic in front of fucking, you know, three... Three drunk people and ten comedians, and and it's the scariest shit that I've ever, you know what I mean. Yeah, and, but yeah. that's kind of why I liked it because I was like, oh, that's like, it's like also, that's where my skills really are because music won't tell you really. Yeah, you know and it's I mean? also all you. I mean, you can, like I said, yeah. you practice that riff, you practice that shit in your room, in the practice room, yeah. and nailed it. And then you're like, yeah, yeah, this I'm on stage. I've done this three hundred times. Right, where you're like this joke. I've done it four times to different people in a different room with a different mic and a different side like yeah. you know you telling a joke as weird as it sounds you telling a joke I did Black Rabbit last night I love Black so Rabbit so fun yeah, that room, we had 12 people that was fucking crazy I've good energy i two sets there and that's that's two of the three I've ever done that weren't open mics because I'm still yeah. new and it's like and I, I was like okay like I could fucking do this maybe yeah. you know but what I mean? that same joke I told there in the same night that I told at Sunset Strip were two very different experiences. Yeah. And the jokes came out different. Yeah. They were paced different. They were because because the energy is different where it's like, right. no, no, I'm playing a fucking metal song. Right. I'm going to fucking shred. Play, we're playing to a, a drummer's on a click track. We're playing to backing track. There's dope yeah. samples going. And I'm, this is I, no different than we were in the practice room. And even if I'm like sick on tour and my voice sucks, I can just hide behind, you know, whatever the sound guy does. Yeah. I can hide behind the how sick the music is. You know what I mean? Yeah. I can. You guys sing it. You know what yeah. I mean? They don't know the words because we're not yeah. a big band. So I'm just, you know what I mean? I can just, you know, it's like. They are a smaller influence on how this is going to go yeah, than and, in comedy when they are. Yeah. They're they, all like, of it. Not nah, uh, you're. Don't right. give them all the credit, okay. but they're a lot of it. Okay. Where you're like, no, I can sh- I can rock in a tiny yeah. room for twenty people. We know people. this song. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
And we know how it goes, start to finish. Right. And it goes pretty much the same every time. But if I'm really feeling them, watch my solo go crazy because I'm fucking right. in it. Yeah. Which is the same when you're when you're really feeling you're it in riffing. the full room yeah. and you're in the fucking pocket and, and just ideas are coming and this guy and that guy and this guy laugh funny and I'm going to call that out and then tie, tie it back into what this guy said. Oh, I'm so early, scared you know. of crowd work, dude. I'm still Yet so scared Yet it's the best because it. when you're in it and it's working, yeah. holy shit. But when you're in it and it's not. I had like shit. I've had like little little moments where I was like, okay, I didn't I didn't fuck that up, you know what I mean? But then but then I but I'm like, but it's like you know it like you can't really throw me off at, at a show when when right. when I'm doing right, music. You no, can't there's throw an me agenda. Off. We have a set list. Yeah, man. start and, to finish. Then, these songs and, are the same. And like if somebody fucking responds to it, says my punchline before or like whatever, yeah. you know. Well, it's probably not a good joke if they're you know saying the punchline. <laughs> if they can but, guess. Yeah, if they can guess. But it's like if somebody throws me off, it fucks me up. It you know if I get derailed, I'm like fuck. Yeah, you know, it's like I'm still there. I'm but still trying the to learn. That's, that's how the reps. you learn. That's yeah. the repetitions, and yeah. I just love the differences. Is all I'm trying yeah. to say because that's basically what I've been trying to do is navigate, like the different. Like this is what I know, right? You know, this and is how the, do I apply what I know to this? Even though it's I know. different. Yeah. this is the martial art that I know, and this is a completely mm-hmm. different one. But they're kind of adjacent in this weird way, they especially are. for me because I'm, I'm on the mic. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so and it's it, like, but it's it's less to hide behind. It's less, you know, like. Like comedy is is you can't hide behind a band, a sick ass band, right? You yeah. know what I mean. It's like I'm on my own up there. You know what I mean. And and I think I know I'm not the first one to say that, and I know this has probably been said a bunch of, but like I I definitely believe I think like most rock stars want to be comedians, mm-hmm. and most comedians want to be rock stars, like in some capacity, right? Because there's something to that of like like I remember I oh, where was I? I was at I forget which concert it was, but I remember just watching something where like. Seeing a concert where 15,000 people are singing the words you wrote Pretty back sick. to you yeah, will never happen to a comedian. But it still ain't 15,000 people laughing at some shit That's true. Said. That's, That's true. Crazy. Because 15,000 people laughing means you literally hijacked the minds and hypnotized 15,000 people and got an involuntary act out of them. They That's did not. So they did not consent to that laugh. You created it. You created it and they had no choice. Right. And there's that's there's beauty in that too. There's some rock star comedians too though, right? Like uh like people that know like you know, if you, like people like Bert or somebody that like they do the story every time, right? Right. Yeah, and that's the I think that's that's the beauty like I think comedy is changing in that way like I saw Louie years ago, years before Goated. I was a comic. Years ago. And at the end of the show, he came out, he like did his set, closed, walked off, got the, you know, standing ovation. And then he came back out and he was like, is there anything you guys want to hear? Mm. And then he took like four or five requests That's and he did crazy. Bag of Dicks. Imagine, imagine being that fucking Right, where like people know your shit enough that they're like, I know that joke, I want to hear it in person. That's so And sweet. so I think that's changing. That's like Ron White doing Tater Salad or something. Exactly, yeah. yeah that's so um, and that's magic. And like, and so I do think, I think they are getting closer to each other. I think the comedy is getting close. Because like you look at Bert, like Bert's, He's a rock uh, his star. Tour, yeah, they're doing these huge he's got stadiums his tour bus and shit. And yeah, and it's um, and it, like he's throwing a full day party. Yeah, that's not it's not an hour and a half comedy show. It's an afternoon of like he has da- uh, Dave William William Dave the the meat guy meet Dave. He has a podcast meet Dave. He like he's been on tour with Bert. They literally like tow or have like barbecue, a, a barbecue. Smoker. He's cooking all afternoon at the venue, that's and that, it's sick. a party. And then they do the thing. You know, it's amazing. And then the jelly roll will open or some yeah, shit. Yeah, right? it's great. And yeah. I love that. And that's like something I remember. Like the last time I was here, um, I was with Derek, and we had this other great conversation. And this was this was probably over a year ago when things weren't. This is pre. Actually, it wasn't the last time. It was the first time I came out, and it was before Mothership opened. So like Vulcan was busy. There were still tons of spots, but like. Like, this scene has exploded since then, Mm -hmm. right? And it was busy then with, like, opportunity and stuff. And I remember Derek and I talking. We were both having this conversation of, like, where are you at with this? And both of us had – it was funny because both of us had this – at the same time, we had the same comment come out where we were both like, I'm still trying to figure out what this is going to be, what Mm -hmm. I want this to be. And even since the beginning, the the term – and this is a thing where I think Derek is so locked into like I'm surrounded by the greatest stand-up comedians in the world right yes. now. That's what I am. That's my where I'm going is mm-hmm. to be one of the greatest. I'm destined to be one of the greatest, and, and I, I will all, do exactly I think he's what it takes. There. Oh, he's they just the people don't monster, the world dude. doesn't know yet. Exactly. That's the, pro, that's, exactly. that's the only issue. And I I remember early on being like. 
comic, the word comic seems you're putting a wall up. You're creating a boundary. What is a comic? And I remember like like there's a, what was it? The the Jerry Seinfeld documentary, uh, Comedian. There's a spot where it's like Seinfeld and uh, I think Chris Rock and someone else. And they're hanging out in the green room at a club in, in L.A. I think it's L.A. Maybe it's New York. I forget. But they're watching whoever's on stage. And they start having this conversation about like, and the, the, the whoever's on stage, it's muted. So they're just sitting in the green room, but they can see the, the thing. And whoever was on stage was moving around. And one of them made the comment, like, that's how you can tell, like, the really good guys did enough. Like, a guy's moving around too much, his jokes aren't strong enough. And I remember hearing that. And mm. I also think, like, that's that's an older philosophy in, in very New York in the sense of, like, you stand there, the mic, you don't, you know, right. you don't even touch the mic, you don't take it tell out of the Tell that to stand. Casey Rocket. There you go. <laughs> there, you know, and tell that to any, you know, there's so many comedians. It's like, and, and I yeah. came... I came into this from a very performant, like I did theater in, in middle school and high school. I was a, like a high school and a college cheerleader. I've like, I was in chorus and I used to teach gymnastics and hip hop. My family owned a dance studio when I was in college. Like I've been like a very big, very energetic, physical performer. And I love that. And so for me, it was like, well, I don't, the like, I realized also, like, early on, my performance was better than my jokes. Mm -hmm. And then my jokes caught up. And yeah. now I feel like, now I feel like, like, we're both So rising. I think that's a little bit where, where I can see myself going because I have the stage time from the metal shit for over a decade and touring right. the country. Com comfort on stage is so, not your problem. Well, once I got, once I had something to say, anything... I felt like a little more comfortable and then I had, you know, done this one and that one a couple times yeah. and I'm like, but it's still not there. Like, and I, and, and the, it really comes down to, I think to me for the writing and, and when I really think about it, that's always been a problem for me. If I'm being self-aware, like with met, with the music stuff, like it takes me forever. It has taken me forever to get, I'm better now, but it's taken me forever to get uh, lyrics written. Cause I'm like, what do I even fucking write about? You know, I had, like like we said, we had a good fucking decent childhood. Like, right. what am I gonna write about? You know what I mean? And that that puts us at a little bit of a disadvantage, I think, in the comedy world too. You know what I mean? Cause like the fun, the funny, some of the funniest guys are are, you know, some of the ones that had With it the rough most tragic and they, and stories, they had it, yeah. they're broken. You know what I mean? Like, and that you hear people like Rogan talk about that all the yeah. time, the island of misfit toys type shit. Right. And it's like. I love those people and like I love being around them, but I don't, I'm I. That's the one. That's the one thing that's like I don't I don't identify on that, and it makes it a little, you know, it's it's it makes it a little. Uh, I have to sit there and really fucking. I have to figure out how to write these fucking jokes, mm -hmm. you know, and I have to do, do the work. And putting and, that time aside, and that's something I catch myself yeah. where I'm like, how much time have I spent just writing? And that's something I've always looked up to, like Asan and Dar like I remember Asan when he was first in L.A. Like I went up to visit him, and. We he I was like, well, what's like your normal day like? Because he was working at the store. And that's mm -hmm. all he was doing. He was also donating plasma <laughs> to help pay rent. Um, a real one. <laughs> and but he was like, oh, I come to this coffee shop every single day, and I'm here for three and a half, four hours. Damn. And he's just writing. Yeah. And I remember hearing that and being like, I've and never even done that. Figuring out for me, and I'm still figuring this out. What is writing? It's like an ambiguous term, and I'm like, what does it look like for me? You know what I mean? Like, cause for me, the way that I do it, and maybe you can share how you do it, mm -hmm. and I and, and I can learn from that and make adjustments. But like, I I come up with you know I think about something fucked up or funny yeah. in my head, and I don't want to forget it, so I put it in my phone, yeah. and that kind of doesn't become a real thing until I do this, and right. so I take it out of my phone, I do this, and then there's aha moments while I'm right. kind of writing out, like I'm riffing on paper about what I could even say about this, and then you have to take that on stage. So there's right. like stage writing. So it's like writing is this weird And I don't thing, think there's a right or a everybody. wrong, but I do know that like as far as creating creating con content's the wrong word, but premises or just even like cuz I I'll t I mean my this is my thing. I have this with me at all times. Mm -hmm. I've been carrying one of these the mini around mole for skin. yeah, the mini mole skin uh, 64 pages, 128 uh front to back and I've been carrying one of these for 12 years and I write an idea down. And sometimes it's a fully flushed out bit, and sometimes it's just a fucking idea. Sometimes right. just a premise. So you don't put stuff on your phone. 
No, I don't like the I don't like the digital part of it. I like yeah. I want I love the because I have so much stuff in there that's like it's a year old and it's I'll go and it's I'll, never made it to stage. Yeah, and I'll go look through it and I'll be like, damn. That's a premise yeah. that that has that's yeah. that's funny to me. You know and what I mean? Like, and yeah. I should pick that out and put it on my paper. And so, like, but I, I don't. I just went through. I need to get more. My, I need to get smaller ones. These are great. I love these because they fit in the back pocket and like even just life. I would even if you you're not a comedian. Up. Yeah, they, they they really do they take fold a beating. In half. They do not go through the wash though. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I would recommend this. Like, I just even having this, even if it's not comedy related, the amount of stuff mm-hmm. I think of and write down. That's ideas for my kid, things I want to do, something I want to research. Da, 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 da. Just having, and I know you can use your phone. I just like the tangible. I like the your physical phone touch. is not a product a pr- productivity box. It's a distraction box. I, I, yeah, right. I agree. I so agree. it's like it's you shouldn't try to f- make those two things flirt with each other. Because, I like, yeah, I like because, that because it's not going to work. Because also, when you're on your phone, and all of a sudden goes, and all of a sudden now I'm over here. Yeah. I came here to write an idea, and I had a a, a flow right. state going. Yeah. And then all and of a sudden, beep, people and now hit by cars there you and go. shit. Yeah, yeah. Um, but about like when you said like there's like I realize that what I write in here. So if there's you know 128 pages, front and back, right? Ten percent of what goes in here has made it to the stage, and of that, like ten percent works. Right, right. It's a whittling. But I down. also know I have 36 of these at my house over the past 12 years. Right. And in my mind, I'm like, I need to start at book one, and go through. And start organizing these notes because there was mm-hmm. something I wrote down that was funny, but I didn't know how to make it work then. And now you're, different. but now I'm better at yeah. writing jokes and making things go. So like that's something. And like what Hassan did, I look at that and like Shanling did it. Shanling would sit at his desk and put in the work. Seinfeld sits down and puts in the work. He's got like uh, he laid out if you know like that one special he did twenty was it twenty four hours to or twenty three hours to kill, where they did a picture of him and he's like literally in the street and he's got legal pads. Like the whole intersection is covered with sheets of legal pad paper because these are like notes from whatever, like all the notes that went into the that special was like a promo picture. Or like yeah, it was like it cover. was on the special or a promo thing or whatever. But I remember being like, I don't do that enough because of all the distractions. And that's where like when I come here, I got a legal pad. Like after this, I'm literally going to a coffee shop. I'm going to sit down and write. Dude. And that's something I don't do at home, which yeah. is not like because I have all the excuses of all the distractions and all the fucking responsibilities of home. And I don't do it there, and it's bullshit because mm-hmm. I should. Right. But I definitely think like you want to create the the material, you need to put in the time, <sighs> yeah. and and that's just what it takes. And again, you want to get good on stage, you need to put in the time. Mm-hmm. I'm not writing enough. I'm not on stage enough. I'm a fucking fraud. <laughs> And I think that's what Derek saw when he was like, what the fuck are you doing, dude? You're supposed to be doing the thing we're doing. We used to be doing this. We were doing it together. And where the fuck are you? When you started, was it just like, were you just 150% when you start? Like that was it. Like me? When you were at year one in in a month? When I was at year one, I was on stage multiple times a night, at least five nights a week, because in San Diego, the weekends at the clubs, there wasn't stage time. And there wasn't a bunch of bar shows on the weekends yet. Mm -hmm. And so I was, you know, Sunday through Thursday, I was doing mics and bar shows and things like that. And then Friday and Saturday night, I would literally go to the La Jolla Comedy Store and sit in the back because they'd let me sit in the back. And I would watch whoever was in town from from L.A. Just taking notes. And I was just just watching, just watching the, the pros do it. Right. Right. And then you hit like year three, year two. Year three, where you start getting booked on on shows, and you're doing eight minutes. You know, somebody gives you five, and then you do your five, and then somebody gives you eight, and then you do your, you know, and you're building time on the mics, and you write your first three, and then you turn three into five, and then you turn, you know, you work on another five. But the truth is, when you put them together, it's not ten; it's really eight. Yeah. And the truth is, it's really six. Right. And then you I had keep a, doing that. I had an eight minute set at Black Rabbit. Like I got, yeah. they gave me eight minutes because I barked and right. I closed the show. And uh, and it, it was uh, it was four fifty seven, and I was like, and you finished all the shit you planned to do. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And but then so all of a sudden you start getting shows, and you're and around year three, all of a sudden like you're doing. You might get asked to do like a weekend at one of the clubs where you're hosting and you're doing eight to ten or you're doing a set at like the Madhouse would do like a showcase show. And now you're doing this eight all over like pretty consistently around town at bar shows and whatever. And then I realized like I hit a plateau where I was like, well, I've just been doing this eight for like a year. 
Yeah. You know, and because I'm doing that, I'm not necessarily doing like I'd end up at a mic and I'd play around and do stuff, but I wasn't writing like I was before and I wasn't creating another eight, the next eight. So then you have to like reset yourself. And th- and this is just my journey. I'm sure everyone's different, but like that was like interesting. And then you start doing more and then you're getting 12 minutes and then yeah. 15, you know, um, but it's just still like it's fucking I'm not I'm a fraud. No, you're not. Stop it, James. No, Derek said I'm a fraud. Listen, no, he did. He the, didn't actually. Derek, and that, that's Derek is it. It Derek, was pure love. Derek is a specimen. Yeah, he is. So, so it's like you kind of, it's like, yes, yes, you know, he said that and it made you feel that way, but it's like, you're not him. You know what I mean? So they're it, like, you, like you've been saying the whole time. It's like, yes, I need to work harder, but also we're different. You yeah. know what I mean? And, and that's, that's fine just, too. that's just, that's, that's just the it. World. And then you're going to have to figure out, we're going to have to figure out how to navigate kind of uh, having a different path to yeah. this fucking goal. And part of that is definitely work harder. Yeah. And do more. What's, and so yeah. and th- that's the that's the foundation. That's the you know, that's the 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 beginning of the recipe is that we just need to work. We, we really need to work harder and tr- and and do more. But it's it. We, we can still get there. You're not a fraud. Yeah. What's what I mean? well, what's funny about that is I was fine with that. Yeah. Until Derek until, and I had that call. Last, right. And I was like, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah. Like you've been in the game longer than me, granted. So, you know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. like I, I would probably feel more like you're feeling at that point too you know what i mean so i'm i'm uh, this has inspired me to i'm gonna fucking go hit a mic tonight now yeah. i'm i'm juiced good that's why i have these conversations with people because it motivates me i learn from you guys and you know it's 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 interesting like i don't I, we don't have to talk about like the dr squatch thing too much no, go ahead. but uh i find it interesting and i wonder how many people think this about you you know prior to hearing stuff yeah. like this is that like Oh, the Dr. Squatch guy's getting into stand-up. And, oh, yeah. They, so, first of all, and every, that's something that you have to deal with, right? So it's Yeah, like, but and then, most of them think I own a soap company. Right. That's so, the weirdest part is they're like, oh, I, my God, I love your soap, and I'm, I love your company. It's I'm so cool what you did, and I'm like... Works, but I'm not trying to, like, change the subject. No, no, change it. We're here. But but I just want to... We've I, talked about Derek enough. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We, lo- we love Derek. I love you. Yeah, I love you. And I almost cried last night, Derek, but well, I love you. And I and gonna, then his honesty. And that I will say you're gonna the last it. thing. You're going to we'll, work harder. We'll tie the bow on Derek here. Okay. Derek at one point was booking uh, the Madhouse Comedy Club in San Diego. He became the weekend booker. He took that those weekends, and this is the beauty of Derek. If he thought you were funny, you got booked. If he didn't, he didn't. He pissed off a lot of people, but he fought for comics. He gave us time. That is the club that we all cut our teeth at doing eight to ten minutes every single weekend for two years and it's the same beautiful thing out of Derek and is like he's like if and I think that's where this comes from from what he said to me he was like I know like I believed in you then and I believe in you now you're not doing the fucking work that it takes and it breaks his heart a little right because he was like no 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 like we were all there yeah where the fuck are you right and I miss uh, you yeah, yeah, because yeah. we were all we were all fucking right. in it so tight that every God. single weekend, every single mic, every night in San Diego, we would all end up at the madhouse for the mic. Yeah, and then we'd be standing around in parking lot smoking weed and laughing more than you've ever laughed with anybody mm-hmm. ever because you're the hanging with the, the hang. Is so good, so good. Yeah. Um, but the beauty is with Derek is everything he said is out of pure love, and of I course. know that. Of course, yeah. And if he didn't care. If he didn't think I had what the it potential, takes, yeah. the potential and the skills and that, he wouldn't have said it to me. Yeah. And so that's the part that I'm like, that makes me sad. Like I am letting my friend down a little. Yeah. Because I know he wouldn't have been as passionate about what he was telling me mm-hmm. if he didn't know or think you're, that like you could and should be right fucking with us. Right. And you're and lucky. You're, you're lucky if you ever get a conversation like that from a friend, or like, or like, you know, a pep it takes talk a real like friend to look at you and be like, "You're fucking up." Right. And I mean, to be honest, that's the pep talk I'm about to have with some of my bandmates. It's like, dude, get the fuck out of there. Stop working at the pizza place. What are you doing? Don't yeah. you want to be a fucking famous metal guy? What the? What are you doing? Don't you want to do music for a living? Why are you doing it in a place where music doesn't matter? Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, because. Because it's comfortable to it's be the easy. big fish in a small. Well, they're not yeah. the big fish. We're not well, there anymore. Some, We're not a local yeah, band in Portland right. anymore. You know what I mean? We're not the big fish. We don't. We don't identify. We don't tell people we're really from there. We don't. You know what I mean? We don't yeah. really want people to. We don't want to be associated with that place. You know what I mean? Like we. We. It's still our hometown. Our friends and family are there. Like we. We go there and play hometown shows, and it's like a big family reunion. It's so fun to see everyone. Yeah. But at the same time, it's a hometown reunion show. You're not getting anywhere doing that 
you know, we did that for like 10 years. We just yeah. would, you know, play the local show once or twice a month and just blow it out of the water and crush. And it just gets, it got us nowhere. You know, it's like if you guys really want to do this shit, get out here with me. There's fucking million places to play, yeah. and then we can go around. You know, but if you really need to work at a pizza shop, yeah. we have them. And you know what? If you want to just do this halfway, then we'll do it halfway, long distance, and I'll come back every once in a while. We'll go on tour every once in a while, but and also, it'll just you... be a slower train, just chugging along. But but we could really fucking crush if you guys come out here. So it's yeah. a similar but different conversation because that that's the other thing. It's like I need them to do that. Like, like, we, or you, you need to replace them. Well, no, 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 I, they're irreplaceable. But if you, if you, uh, that, that sounded very cold, but it's right. also a thing, like, well, yeah, but no, it's where I'm never doing this again with anyone else. Like, I'm, I'm that's done, a very I'm, narrow minded. Concept. Well, no, I just like, I'm, I'm, I've done everything I ever wanted to do with music, to be honest. You know, I went on the tour with the big band, I'm good. If I wanted to be, if I wanted to be done, I could be done, but there's more to be done. Yeah. So it's like, and, and, the, and it has to be done with them. That's this is the mission. We've been together since we were in high school. Two of our guys are brothers. One of them I've known since he, the guitarist I've known since we were, he was six. Like there is no there is no replacing any of us. We're mm -hmm. all integral to this band, and I don't really want to start. Another, I'm not going to do the metal band thing again with a new group of guys. It's just that's just that's where my head is at with that. You know what I mean? That book is that book is okay. It's that, written. Yeah, it's it's it. it's written. And but uh, but um, with the stand up thing, it's different because it's up to you yeah so that's different yeah it's no, up to me it's yeah. up to you know what i mean it's like there's no like oh man if i had the boys out here we could do it yeah you no, know no, what i mean no no like, it's no. up to you dude you know yeah. what i mean and are so you that's, gonna go get the work are you gonna right. go do the work yeah. Yeah. yeah so but um just to transition back yeah, to what ahead. we're talking about uh i like that is that is very interesting to know that you were doing it for so long before the dr squat shit and yeah, that it was, was like five that years was just in. kind of like a, a detour yeah, you know I, I mean? did. Like, it, w it was. It was a beautiful detour. But I also go back and forth. Like, if I hadn't got that, where would I be comedically? Would I? Would, right. Because my, again, bandwidth. How much bandwidth is going elsewhere now? And you got it because of comedy. I yeah, I did. It was at the Madhouse Comedy Club. It was a random Thursday night. I had. Uh, I feel bad because I've told this story. Not that anyone's heard it, but um, it was a random Thursday night. I had nothing on the calendar. My wife at the time was home with our baby. And it was, I was like, hey, like, I'm, I'm going to try to go get up, I think. And she was like, yeah, go, go, go. And I went down to the madhouse and I just kind of hung out. And I was like, hey, like, you know, if, if it's possible to get up, like, that'd be cool if I could do a guest spot. And they're like, yeah, sure. And I did eight minutes. And so I wasn't supposed to be there. It just happened to work out. I get on stage. The the CEO and, like, two other people from the uh, this marketing firm happened to be there. They were there by accident. They Their night started with no intention of being in a comedy show. They were out like for a bachelor party mm -hmm. or something. And they ended up there. They saw me. A week later, they had a meeting about She's this perfect. new. Yeah, no, well, it wasn't that <laughs> from the start, but like a week later, they had this a kickoff meeting about this new brand they were going to work with called Dr. Squatch. It was like a manly soap brand. They needed a front man. They know they needed to be funny. They wanted to like, you know, be disruptive with the ad. And one of them was like, what about that guy we saw? Long hair, beard, he looks outdoorsy, man, like mm -hmm. rugged, da, da da This guy's like, he might be perfect. A week later, I was in their offices having a meeting. Two weeks after that, uh, I wrote a script, a five-minute script. Two weeks after that, I worked with their writers to turn a five-minute script into a three-and-a-half-minute script or something. A month later, we shot it. A year later, we did $40 million in sales. Whoa, and it was like shit. skyrocket. Like, it was crazy. That's awesome. And and then since then, we've been making ads and, and doing stuff. And that was five years ago. And I've been consistently, pretty much consistently. There were a couple of little gaps in there, but pretty much consistently. I feel like I don't working. see, it could just be my algorithm, but I haven't seen one in like years. So we haven't, they like, I we still work together. We still make stuff whenever there's like new products and stuff. But like they're, they've grown enough where they're at Target. Like their branch, oh my gosh, it's yeah. at Target, it's at Walmart, it's at Costco. Like they're, it's amazing what 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 the the people there have done with that brand and grown it to be. And from being this small little disruptive brand that we were, you know, like when I got there, there were like five people, and now there's like a hundred plus people because it's a like they have a, their own factory and stuff. That mm -hmm. like it's you know, it's it's a it's a probably business. smells good in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but like it's interesting because now it's like. They're doing things, you know, they're reaching out in so many different places and ways and stuff like that where it's like I'm and it's weird because like your insecurity hits up of like, well, they've been shooting a bunch of stuff with other people. It's like, <laughs> oh, yeah, but like you're you're like the squatch guy. Like, it's fine. Yeah. 
and it's and like we do stuff on pretty much once a month we're shooting something or doing something i'm making content with them yeah yeah and they use like we shoot social social stuff every month that i shoot on my own for them and then we do like full full productions for like new product launches like we did the brick and we did um stuff i can't even talk about because it's not out yet but um but so that's the thing is like we're consistently still doing something it's a great gig and i love it and the people that are writing it like i get to work with them and i get to have my input put in um, but they've also grown, like, in the beginning, it was, like, me and a group of, of people at this marketing firm. And now they've gotten big enough where, like, they're working with, like, multiple marketing firms. And there's mm-hmm. whole teams that are writing stuff. And, and I don't get to be as involved, which part of me is, like, okay, good. It's, a, yeah. it's not on my you ass anymore. just kind of show up and say what you have I to get say. to show up and do it. And, and, like, you know, and, and I've definitely maintained the thing of, like, you know, they send me – I want the script a week out. Who is Who are the people that are, like, the script supervisors whatever and the writers? And I want to, you know, like, hey, this line, this is how I would say it. Uh, because yeah. I know how, like, I'm good at words. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's the worst sentence yeah. to say you're good at I'm words. I'm good at words. I'm good at words. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so, like, but, like, I get to get my input. And a lot of times we'll do a shoot and they'll be like, okay, like, you know, and I'll be like, oh, this joke, I have, like, three riffs ideas. You know, they're like, cool. And it's, it's always like, we'll get it how we wrote it. And then let's play and see what happens. So I get to put it. So it's it's kind of like, it's great. I'm, I'm loving it. And it's yeah. opened up opportunity for other things. But... It was definitely this detour of like, and, and it was a great opportunity, and it still is happening. And like I said, it's still the security. It provides the security right. for my daughter and I to live a good life. So they just give you like, you just get like a salary. I mean, not to get too yeah, much no, no, into no. your yeah, finances. Exactly, yeah, like I'm, a, I'm on like a like a three year deal with them that like like my bases are covered. We sh- I owe them this many days a month, and then this many like we do some social stuff, and it's like it's basically yeah. what I do with my photography business, which pays the bills for yeah all the shit. And that the I'm truth is, it's like I'm glad that we like I know exactly how much money I'm gonna get every month. Yeah, same. I'm not getting rich. We're fine. Right. That's the thing. Like yeah. we're good. They're and like, listen, we're not gonna, again, you're not going to be rich. <laughs> security. Uh, and that's the, the other part. I was like, I mean, I'm sure with a number of different things I've learned along the way, a number of times I could have negotiated and yeah. da-da-da, but you got to be willing to walk. Yeah. And when there's a six-year-old looking at you with a that you need to feed. Kiddo's going to eat. Kiddo's going to eat. That's I'll awesome. take less to know kiddo's going to eat every month. Right. Right? And that's not, probably shouldn't say it publicly, um, <laughs> but it's it's just, you know, it's I mean, the that's thing. The like, security is the reality. So. Yeah. But it, and that's the thing is it's provided that and working towards that and that's the part that like back to D- Derek and like kind of what he said it was like I look at him like my path is so different because I'm I'm creating the stability now to then be able to, as long as, if I know everything's covered then I can really dive into this thing and everything's and be he fine. hears that and he's like shut up excuses, he hears that and he's excuses. like no nothing matters but this right because this is how you get there right and I'm like yeah yeah yeah. I get it, yeah. but I'm doing it like backwards. He's like, trying to get you to tap into that monster that was inside of you in San Diego, basically. Yeah, back in the day. and that monster has a kid now. Yeah, a, a little monster. A little monster <laughs> that needs to eat. It right. needs a roof over her head. Um, still, but I love it's it, and there, it's though. like Squatch. Squatch is this beautiful thing, and it's created more opportunity and more things. And and also, I'm in this weird place comedically where, you know, we have over a billion views. My oh, face yeah. has been seen a billion times. <laughs> That's crazy. Which is fucking mind blowing, yeah. and, and it's like when it's I'm out platform. and about, yeah. And when I'm out and about, it's almost every day, some guy somewhere walks past me and is like, "Who's okay. <laughs> And then they, you see the glow in their eyes, and they're like, yeah. "You're a guy." I'm I saw like, oh you at God. Vulcan before I moved here. You were popping in on Secret Show, yeah. And I was like, "Oh my God, that's a fucking, yeah." That's a fucking. And so it's, it's great. like the the meme from uh, with the fucking Leonardo DiCaprio. But look, you know yeah. what he's like? Look, it's fucking Doctor Squatch. And so it's the kind of thing where I look at that and I'm like, I've never been in a better place to, to convert. This. Yeah, to convert those people because like nobody, those none of those people know I'm a stand up. Right. Right. So it's like I have this awareness as I grow and build my brand, blah, blah, blah. Those people will be like, that guy does that. Like they just don't know yet is how I view it. And that's my job now mm-hmm. is to create the content and put the things out there to right. grab and they're like, oh my God, he does that? Let's go see him. You should pitch a Squatch commercial where you're like doing you're like doing a stand-up bit and uh, the people in the front can smell you because you don't smell good. And they just keep and heckling. They, and they keep What heck- scent? Yeah, what is that? That smells horrible. And it's like I should have, you know, used the soap <laughs> before I went on stage. <laughs> I like it. But um so yeah. that's like that that's kinda like I don't know, did I answer your question? Yeah, I think so. I mean, we're just talking here, dude. We're yeah, yeah. Talking. I mean, yeah, it's uh 
it's a good place to it's a good place to be. I mean, you could you could still you know, once I think once the kid gets older, you're just going to keep cooking. You know what I mean? You're going to yeah. keep you're going to keep and that's working how I look at, at like you're going to keep working at this pace that that he's talking about, you know, that you were talking about with yeah. Derek. And it's but a then, different but pace. But then someday the the kid's going to be, you know, old enough, whatever, something's going to shift and you're going to be able to be like, "Okay, now I can I right. can use all that all those tools in my tool shed and build this fucking house. And I have a you heck of a mean? and I have a heck of a tool shed. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so yeah, th- I mean that's that's the philosophy I'm I Yeah. I get after. How how did you get started with like uh stand up? Just because I'm so new and I'm trying to so you know everybody I, has like their own little start. I know yeah. that's kind of a lame I did podcast. It, I did it the one time in college. Question right? That. And that was because I always thought like I it's funny once I got into it I realized that my entire childhood was very stand up comedy centric like I was five years old when I saw Whoopi Goldberg's HBO special when she was nineteen. My dad like got an HBO tape of her mm-hmm. HBO special. Um I had been, you know, I could recite all of Bill Cosby himself by the time I was like seven. Yeah. Because my dad had it and we listened to it a lot, stuff like that. My family would go out in the living room and watch. I have two older brothers. So my family would go out in the living room and watch like movies on Friday night, like mm-hmm. family movie night. I would sneak, I would go into my parents' room and watch uh, Comedy Central stand up. Nice. At like eight. Yeah. And I didn't realize how much of that I consumed until I got into it and started really thinking about like you listen to a podcast and you hear like Mark Maron be like, well, that one time I did the 30 minute, you know, stand up comedy central, blah, blah, blah. And I wore the scarf and I was like, I remember the scarf. Like, when yeah. do I remember the scarf? <laughs> you were eight. Like, holy shit. Yeah. You were watching, you know, it's like subliminally. So in your childhood. I always, yeah, I always technically I did five minutes at like a middle school talent show oh. um, in seventh grade. And then in college, like I said, high, middle school and high school, I was doing theater and performance and stuff like that. I Give me a reason to be on stage. I was always like a funny kid and like a clown kind of kid. Mm-hmm. And then, but I never considered myself the funniest. I really didn't. Like in college, I thought all my friends were funnier than me. They made me laugh all the time. Yet I, yet they thought I was the funny guy. It was very, it was mm. kind of interesting. So the humble, the humble class clown. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I think like, and I think this is like third kid shit. Like, like I said, two older brothers. I think. My skill set is I learned how to say the most inappropriate thing possible at the exact right moment where you wouldn't get in trouble. Exactly. Ooh, smart. Where it was like, if they're laughing, they can't really hit you. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. But, and so as a young kid, I learned, because like as a third kid, dude, nobody gives a fuck what you want. You're like, and that doesn't mean like you're being neglected or nobody's listening, to you, but nobody's listening to you. You're the third kid. Are you fed? Are you here? You're clothed. You're I'm fine. I'm an only child. So I, okay, this is interesting. So you know, when you're sitting at the dinner table, you're the nobody wants to hear your opinion. Yeah, nobody. So they've when, already had to raise two of you. Yeah, yeah. they're t- and the other everyone else news. is talking and whatever. And so like I realized like oh I learned my the skill of timing mm-hmm. because if I wanted to be heard, I had to I had to know exactly when to say the thing. And I better say it very like funny or engaging. Mm-hmm. So like economy, say it, say it at the right moment. Say it quickly. Economy of words, engagement, funny, whatever it takes to get your point in, so it actually Hits. gets the attention that it deserves. So you were doing, you were, you were punching up when you punching. I when had you were a kid. to. Nobody, yeah. you know. So that's crazy. So I think that's like where the like the original skill set was like learned. Mm-hmm. Um, you were born into this. I feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel it's funny. I do look back now, and it's like something I've started writing. Like I have a whole little notebook just called Third Kid Shit" because I'm nice. like, I think there's so much that's smart of to that do notebooks of, that are like that are just like a subjects. specific. Yeah, that's smart. And uh, and so I think you know. Then I go to college. I'm I'm super depressed. I, d- I didn't like school. I shouldn't have been there. Um, and then my therapist, who I was going to, was like, "Well, what do you want?" You know, I was like, well, "I always thought about comedy," and she was like, "That's your homework," and I did it, and it scared the shit out of me. I didn't do it, you know. And then I moved. I dropped out of college, moved to Tampa, was working construction with my uncle. He had a small construction business. And I was there for 10 years, four of them in the field, four and a half in the field. And we were, like, inspecting pipeline and repairing stuff. And then I moved to the office, and all of a sudden, like, I'd been there for 10 years, five years of them sitting in an office running a construction company with my uncle. And I knew I wasn't happy, but it was, like, it was kind of the thing where, like, what is, you know, well, what's the dream? The dream is that you have a job and you have a life and the house and the kids and whatever. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I got married. I had two stepdaughters. I had a cute little house. I had a small sailboat. I had uh, a share of a little airplane. 
I, I had this beautiful little life. I had a beautiful little life. And I was miserable nine, ten hours a day of my life sitting at a desk filling out paperwork for the government and Mm -hmm. payroll and DOT shit and insurance documents. And I realized that. And I had started, I saw an ad for this improv group that was like right local, right around where I was in in Tampa. And I reached out and I was like, hey, I'd love to perform with you guys. I've done theater. And they were like, well, you can't, you know, if you've never done it, you can't just join us. But there's a class where a bunch of us are going to take it. You should take this. And I signed up for this improv class in St. Pete. And within like two weeks, I had made a, a very close friend, um, with, uh, a gentleman named Patrick McInnes, who had been doing improv for a long time. He was kind of the head of that, uh, the Third Thought, which was the name of the improv, improv group. And I loved it. I fe- like head over heels, loved it, loved the creativity, loved just what it was. It, we, we were doing every Monday night. It was a three-hour class of improv. Within three weeks, he was like, yes, come perform with us. So every Monday, I was doing three hours of class. Every Thursday, I was doing an hour of improv at like a bar to nobody. But still, you're you're improvising, you're creating, you're being creative. All of a sudden, I started writing. I just couldn't not write. I had mm-hmm. ideas. I was writing and writing and writing. And through all that, I realized that like con- uh, this construction thing, this ain't for me. No. Like, like this is oh, a me- shit. This is a means to an end. I just kept doing this. Because I was smart enough to do it. Yeah. Like I could show up and I could fill out the forms and do the things and hire a guy. And and then you got the do, carrot. You got the money. I got a little bit. of Yeah. But what's funny is like my wife and I at the time, we were making just enough money to slowly go in debt. Does that make sense? Like, <laughs> yeah. like we were we were living great and whatever. But also when we split up, like we had twenty thousand dollars in credit card debt. You know, it was like that kind of thing. And. And so all of a sudden I hit this thing. I was like, I'm not, I'm not happy doing this. And so I wanted to get out of construction. And everyone, like my family and everyone was like, yeah, if, I mean, if you're not feeling my uncle's fine This is in it. San Diego. Still. No, this is in Tampa. Tampa. Okay, wow. And uh, I just kind of told him, like, I don't think I want to do this anymore. And my wife was like, well, what are you going to do? And I was uh-huh. like, I, and I, so I started putting, like, business plans together. And I had, like, a five-month kind of, like, phase out of the business mm-hmm. that I was going to help phase in the next, you know, someone else to do train something. People, yeah, train so. somebody. And... In that five months, my wife and I at the time came to the friendliest, like, we just had conversations and we came to, like, the friendliest conclusion that, like, I love you, but, like, maybe we shouldn't be married anymore and Mm -hmm. da-da-da. And then we talked to a therapist and the therapist was, like, she talked to us individually and then together and she was just pretty much, it doesn't sound like you guys, like, you guys don't hate each other. You're not fighting. You're not at each other's throats. This was no kid? This is, I had step, she had two daughters, so I had stepdaughters. Great kids. And great, I mean, and we ended that on the nicest terms is this the same person that you have the kid with? no okay, okay. no so no, second one yeah i've had two um and all of a sudden once she and i decided to split and i still had a couple of months phasing out of the construction company she moved out i moved her into an apartment um gave her all the furniture and stuff like make sure she was good the girls mm-hmm. were good whatever they needed da 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 and all of a sudden i'm like all right well this kind of changes things because now i don't have all this responsibility of like the family and the thing and a wife and like I'm not tied to here anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, wait a second. Like, what do I want? I was 30 years old. Because they're not your kids. They're not. They are and they're not. Like, right. they, they have a dad. He's great. He lived there. They, I mean, they were they were fine. Um, I miss them when I did leave. Like, they were they were I from age two to age eight. They were in my life. They yeah. were wonderful human beings. And they For still are. Years. Huh? Crucial years for a kid. For for yeah. a portion of it, yeah. And like I'm glad their dad was around and like he and I had a decent relationship and the mom, you know, their their mom had a good relationship with him and they still do. Everything and like, sounds all... chill with that. It really was. <laughs> it really was. And but it was like I'm thirty and I was like, wait, wh- what do I want? Mm-hmm. I don't need to immediately dive into another thing to support this household and this family and all this stuff and this lifestyle. So what do I want? And it at thirty years old it felt like it was the first time I ever asked myself that. And so I would encourage anyone that's listening, ask yourself right now. <laughs> what I wish somebody would have stopped me at 18 years old and said, hey, what are you actually, like, what are you into? What do you want? <laughs> and that's why, like, I, I'm, like, pissed at my parents a little bit. But my parents definitely, like, they came out. They were boomers. They Their parents were three. How old are you? I'm 42. Oh. Didn't know Thank that. you. Young man. Thank you. The young looking man. Thank you. Uh, my parents were boomers. They came out. Their parents were out of the Depression. Like they, you know, my dad's, my, my dad's philosophy or my dad grew up in the, with the, with the mindset that his parents gave him, which was get an education because not everyone can 
your you know your privilege go get the education get a job and be thankful you have a job mm -hmm. that transition to me to you know well i mean if you want to do something that's but you go to college first you did a you need a backup plan in case mm. the thing you don't want da, 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 but you need to go to college you did a i shouldn't have gone to college it was a waste of money i didn't like it i didn't thrive i was miserable i was depressed i was binge drinking and it was it was mm. pretty bad um uh and all of a sudden i'm 30 and i'm like why am I just asking myself this now? Yeah. Dang it. Da yeah. Like in a way, but also I have all this experience. Right. And I'd been doing all this improv. I'd been doing a bunch of writing and I'm 30 years old going, what do I want? And I was like, I want to perform. Mm -hmm. I want to be a stand up. I want to like, cause I realized that 90% of everything I wrote was stand up. The rest of it was like sketch and stuff like some scripts and whatever. And I was like, I want to go do this. Like, I love this. And I literally like rented out the house Packed up my truck, built a bed in the back, put like the, everything I owned fit in my truck. I got rid of everything else. And I spent five months driving around the country doing every open mic I could find, making my way to San Diego. So my brother had a futon I could live on for free. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be a stand up. And within, within about two months, I had done like it was crazy. So you started at thirty at thirty, 30 years as well. Yeah, sweet. So so it was like in within three months. It was a five month trip around the country, but within three months, I remember thinking, I will do this for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. I don't like I've never had less money and been happier in my entire <laughs> life. This is what this is. And even when I said like when I met my uh, my second wife when we were dating, I told her like we were on a date. And my phone rang. And it was a club saying like, "Hey, can you be here at 8? And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I'll be." You know, there, yeah. it was like seven oh two. And I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> but I'm, I'm on a date. Can I? I need a plus one." And they were like, "It's sold out. You can't. We can't do it." Mm -hmm. And I was like, "No problem. She'll go home. It's fine." <laughs> and I told her, "I was like, listen, you need like this is date number two. I like you. You seem to like me, but you need to know that my phone is gonna ring if we keep dating. My phone is gonna ring and ruin everything all the time mm -hmm. because this is what I'm doing." I was like. My goal in life is like I'm either going to be 50 years old driving around a country in a piece of shit motorhome telling jokes or 50 years old driving around a country in a slightly nicer motorhome telling jokes. Mm -hmm. Like that's the only this way is, this, this shakes is the, down. This is the shit. And she got it at the time. She was she was all for it. And that was when I knew I was like, this is what I'm going to do. And I still feel that way. Mm -hmm. My path is just whatever it is. You know, it's right. it's changed from that standpoint. But um. That's how I got into it. And once I hit the road and was doing these mics and, and stuff, I was like, this is, there is no turning back. Yeah. This is what this is. That's awesome. And, and now I look at it and I'm like, that is still the goal. This is like, I, I, within the first few years, especially in San Diego, it's like the whole conversation is when are you going to move to LA? When are you going to move to LA? You have to move to LA. When are you going to move to LA? And you never did? Never did. Good. But and that was the thing is like everyone I m knew that moved to LA like nobody loved LA. I love San Diego. Mm -hmm. San Diego's beautiful. It's the only place in California I would ever live. And I don't, I don't, so I, don't nice. I don't, I would never live in California. But if if I had to for some reason, I right. would, I would, I, live in, I would live in San Diego. And and so, and then I got you know met a woman, fell in love, had a baby. I'm like, well, I'm not moving to LA. Yeah. With a, you know, and that's my thing now is like I, I can't leave. I'm not leaving my kid. No. I am not going to disappear or from this Or taking her kids. away from, or like trying to. Yeah, that's the, not an option would, either. Would her mom ever move out here? I don't know. But the trick, like that, Might the thing with that ask. is, the, the thing with that is, is like, well, who, you know, asking somebody else to pick up their entire life. Who's not it, with you anymore. Who's not with you anymore. It's kind of weird. It is kind of weird. It's the kind of thing where it's like, unless I'm like, I'll buy you a house and put you, like, yeah. if you're not somehow providing a huge opportunity for them to which mm. i totally understand like no they're not gonna you know move and there's around. no getting back to get, get, doing that whole thing again uh, no no yeah no. okay um but we i would say this we're raising a great kid mm -hmm. we're on the same page 90 that's awesome plus percent of the time when it comes to the kid and that that's what matters so the journey has changed the path has changed the speed at which or whatever you want to call it or has it or is this the ride that's the other part i don't know man i don't know man I, shit, I, I, shit works the way it works shit works the way it works and you know what I'm loving every minute. I'm learning. Sure. I'm growing. Are you happy? That's all that matters. I'm pretty damn That's happy. That's pretty much all that I'm matters. I'm pretty damn and happy. And maybe you're not doing arenas with Schultz. You know what I mean? But it's like, that doesn't mean that you won't be. And that right. doesn't mean that you're not maybe just as happy. You know what I mean? Or, like, or happier. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I don't know. Because I get to look into the eyes of a six-year-old and be like, hey, I'm you killing know, last weekend. La yeah, I'm killing it as dad. And also, like, like, me looking at her when I pick her up Monday from school. 
And the whole previous weekend, I was in, you know, I was doing shows in Tulsa. I was here for a week. And mm -hmm. she's like, what did you do? I was like, I was hanging out with the funniest people I've ever met in my entire life in a city where comedy is exploding. And it's literally where it's, where it's all, all happening. In a way, yeah. yeah. And I got to perform more in one week than I get to perform here and da-da-da-da-da. And my my soul is full. My heart is full. You got to full. be a rock star. I, uh, sure. But it's more – because that's the other part is like like – I've experienced this much fame. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the weirdest part of the whole thing. I want to tell jokes and perform. Yeah. The rest of it, like... That's kind of how I feel with the like tour we went on. Like, f as far as the in the micro world, the microorganism world that is, you know, the petri dish that is the metal scene. It's really small, yeah. you know, compared to everything else going on. Uh, it's like I kind of did everything I wanted to do. I went on tour with like my favorite band ever. Yeah, it's like it's like that movie where the guy joins Judas Priest or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like I, I fucking kind of did it. I kind of fucking did it. Right. But you then know what the I mean? next level is you are the band that plucks the other band. Right. Because it's your tour. And that would be way more fun. That would. Right. Well, but um, you know, what's weird. Would it? That's no, the part. No, yeah. I look at both of it. because it's know. like I talked to Derek and Derek's is like, you know, show, like he told me one time about being on tour. Like he had just gotten back. I think it was the last time I was here because he was on tour with Schultz. And he was like, dude, Schultz, every and he actually said this last night. He's like, 24 hours of my day is comedy. He's like, then I look at Brian Simpson, where like he's like, Netflix special, got another one coming out, doing this thing, trying to make this yeah. stuff, da da da. Like, like their day's even more intense. Derek should be that. And big. then you go even bigger. And he's like, da da da. And he's like, Schultz, every moment of the show, afterwards, Schultz is breaking down in his mind. He's going to the stage crew and the lighting guy, and he's like, hey, we missed that mark. This needs to be happening. Why didn't that happen on the music cue right. when this was supposed to happen? Da, 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 da. It's just like, refining. It never, it's just chiseling. It's yeah. Just little You're chiseling little, yeah. constantly. So, like, there is something to be of, like, you got to go, and you were just like, oh, my God, look at what we're doing. But you weren't responsible yeah. for all of that. Yeah, and I saw, I mean, we hung out with them a lot, and I saw a lot of that kind of stuff, too. Yeah. With that. And here's the other part. Bert's having a blast. Right. Bert's got a team, and yeah. you hear like you hear like uh, Joe talk Handlers. about it all the time. Where he's like he's like I don't like hearing that. Like Joe's commented a few times to people like yeah he's like I don't like hearing like oh my team my team yeah. because he's like now you're managing people and that's the other part. Like I ran that construction company with my uncle. like I was the the guy the admin. My uncle was in the field. I was hiring firing doing stuff. You know I got twelve employees. I have. Uh, you know, three quarters of a million dollars worth of equipment that we have to keep running. I have to keep payroll coming in. You know, we got to pay out 12 G's in payroll this year or mm -hmm. this month. Actually, no, this two weeks. We need to do enough business to pay all the insurance, pay for the lights, pay for the things, mm -hmm. keep these people working, which means I got to go find the work and fill out the applications for the DOT. And I got to yeah. get this giant set of like 400 pages of plans with all the pipeline on 75 running for the next 25 miles that they're going to build. And I got to go literally line by line, pipe by pipe and go, this is going to cost this much to clean it. This is going to cost this much to fix it. This is going to, okay, are the numbers right? If I submit this, uh, this, this proposal and we get it, are we going to actually make money? Are we going to fuck ourselves? What am I missing? Home what I got to do? Da, 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 like, they're doing Schultz is doing that hit that version with comedy of a fucking worldwide arena tour. You can do that. We'll get there. Yeah, we'll get there. And that's the other part is I look at the business side of it. I'm like, I've run like even a few years ago. I was like talking to guys that were doing you know comedically better. I'm like, did you do you have an LLC? What are you doing? Like, how, what are your taxes yeah. like? Are you writing this off? Do you have a home thing? Like, did you buy a computer? Did you write right. that off? Did, and they're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, what do you mean? What am I talking about? What are you talking about? Yeah, like you were approaching it from a business owner kind of standpoint. right. Yeah. And now and so I think that's that's I definitely have that, and I'm thankful I have. That. Yeah, you yeah, it's a tool in your tool shed. Exactly. You know what I mean? And so. It all it's funny we just keep circling back. No, it's good though. I think my it's path good. is fine. I, I feel bad that I'm good, letting buddy. Derek down. Your path is good. Thank you. And your We're friends care about you. So. They do. And that's the best part cuz everything you did say was love. Yeah. Yeah. T, where are we at with time? Who cares? This I is know, this fun. is fun. Uh, 128 right now. Oh, dude, we're cooking. We can keep we're going. We're pretty good. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, it's it's again, you're lucky if your friends give a shit enough. To tell you, to you're tell you, up, you're fucking or possibly, up. or at least challenge you, or yeah, at least be Which like, I you, you could be doing better. Yes. You know what I mean? Because yeah, I, that's because exactly I bet, it. Because I bet you, it's easy for you to kind of think like, okay, I'm killing it with dad. I'm killing it as dad. You know right? what? You'll never think that. I'm okay. going to teach you right now. Okay. All along the way, I do feel like I'm a great dad. All the time, you're like, I could have handled that. Are you comparing had... yourself to your dad ever, or no, or maybe subconsciously? I'm, I mean, I'm sure it's running in the sure. background somewhere. Yeah. Um, I feel like 
it's interesting. I, f- I feel like we are, like everyone talks about AI as this scary thing. And I'm like, we are the AI. Like we are. We are, it's, I've tried to turn this into a bit and it never works, but we are literally a functioning computer, right? We mm-hmm. are this nervous system. A biological computer. A biological, right. Because we literally are, <clears throat> your brain just sends electrical pulses. You eat stuff, it processes. It pulls, it goes in it the pulls energy yeah. to fuel this thing that the, that the nervous system, like have you ever seen that picture? It was, it was on the internet, it went around at one point. It was the brain, the eyes, and the full nervous system taken out of a human body. And it's literally just a brain, two eyes, and then the nerves that would go to the ears, and then it's the entire nervous system. Should we system. pull it up or not waste time with that? If you can find it, it's yeah. kind of interesting. But I was like, that's all that we are, mm-hmm. is that nervous system. And everything else is just what it uses to interact with the space around us. But that's just a computer that is sending electrical pulses, which is ones and zeros, just like a computer, to a processor, and it's receiving information and reacting and responding, right? Mm-hmm. So... I look at this and I'm like, my, except we have consciousness, right? We have the awareness that we are that. Right. And I look at my dad. Uh, see the one on the top right? Far right. Yeah, like yeah. that. That's it, dude. That's your brain and your nerve. Like, that is all. That's just the thing that takes the info and sends the info. It brings the info in, processes it up here, and sends it back out. That's the computer mm-hmm. that functions the meat sack, right? It's kind of crazy. And so we're running software. And that's like, like I look at it and I'm like, I'm, I'm version, my dad is version whatever. Cause it is weird to think like, okay, I'm this version. Right. But my dad is the version before me. You're like the new MacBook. You're like, yeah, the, yeah. you're like the I'm, M1. Right. Right. But like, so what was my dad? My dad was, was the, the, whatever the, the last version was. Right. And then his dad, and then go back thousands of years. To there are people man, so. below you in the software chain for thousands of years and you're running their the latest version of their software. Damn. And so I look at my kid and I'm like, so you're the next version. You're and programming. Yes, you have a hardwire software that you get and then your parents like do up updates mm-hmm. and that's all the shit they teach you, right? And so I look at my daughter I'm like, okay, what did my parents teach me and what have I learned on my own, right? Cuz I'm AI, I'm learning, I'm self-teaching. You're a computer that's programming the next computer. So Correct, but you're also still learning yourself. So yeah. you're giving yourself upgrades. You you fall down and skin your knee. That's a fucking software update to be a little careful when you're walking around, mm-hmm. right? Um, so it's like, well, what did my parents teach me? What have I learned on my own? What did I learn at 30, whether it's emotional intelligence or safety or what skill sets or whatever, that I could teach my daughter at eight? And how much farther along will she be? If I can get her to have the emotional intelligence I had when I was 20, when she's 10... Where will she be when she's 30, right? Because it's all it's all uh, exponentially yeah. growing, right? So that's how I look at him. Like, I look at my dad and like, you, like I had a great dad. Mm-hmm. He was loving. He was there. He was supportive. But I also now see his shortcomings. He's no longer with it. But I see like where he lacked, where he wasn't the supportive guy because of his baggage, because mm-hmm. of his parents and the shit they put on him because we're all carrying all this baggage around. And I look at that and I'm like, okay, where is my baggage getting in the way? Where is the shit that my dad, I wish he would have done a little more with me? Where was I, like, you know what? I was like, my dad was not a sports guy. My brothers and I all played sports. My dad did not come to games. he come to some baseball. Like, when I was in high school, I played football. I got one game out of him. That was, like, the deal. It was, like, this weird, unspoken, mm-hmm. like, dad's like, well, I don't like football. And I remember my therapist being like, your dad should have been in every fucking game whether he liked it or not. Yeah. Because it has nothing to do with your dad. But I learned later, my dad had some real fucked up trauma from like high school football and this weird shit with his dad Damn. and like the coaches. You're going to play, son. Oh, that no. Was that shit. like, yeah. no, not you're going to play. You're going to be a star. Oh, You're yeah. going to be the fucking jock star. I want you to be. And my dad the was guy not that guy. The guy wearing his high school rings. Yep. And shit high school rings life. and the Letterman jacket yeah. and fucking cheerleaders. Like, that's the guy my, my grandpa thought my dad was supposed to be. That's what he wanted him and needed him to be so he could be so my grandpa could be the guy he thought he needed to be to all of his peers yeah. and it was all just this generational trauma and weird shit that when it got to my dad he was like I don't and now I can look at it my brothers and I have talked about it like my dad didn't know how to help mm-hmm. because he had so much trauma with the football and the sports and the things that he didn't know how to support us so he just didn't he's like no no go like mm. go do it 
Of course, go do it. Yeah, you yeah. need a ba- a baseball mitt. You need a new bat. Of course, I've got you football. I'm so proud of but you. But he go just couldn't look. But at I can't. It. Yeah. I have nothing to offer here. Yeah. So I'm gonna remove myself. And, and also, that whole thing kind of fucked me up. Like, like the whole sports thing kind of like fucked me up. Right. What he yeah, was yeah, thinking, yeah. Right. Yeah. And so in his mind, he's like, if I'm there, I'm just gonna ruin this for you. Right. Because I he's literally kind of trying can't to help like you. look out for himself. Yeah. So and so's dad is clearly better at helping you with this than I am. Right. When the truth is, all I needed was him to sit in the stands and be like, I love you. I'm proud of you. Keep going. Right. You know? And so that's the shit I learned. And I look at my kid and I'm like, where is my baggage getting in the way? Where is my soft? Where can I update her software sooner? Mm-hmm. Because now that I have the understanding of my dad that I didn't get till I was 30 something years old, I totally have a new appreciation for him and the struggle he was going through. And like, this is another thing Derek and I went through last night. We're like, we have no idea what's going on in other people's lives or what happened to them before. And that goes for your parents. And my mom now is like 78 years old and it's been really fascinating to talk to her about her childhood and her life and her baggage and my dad and hearing her tell me things that, you know, when she told me like that, all that stuff about my dad that I never knew, it was like, oh, that all, now I know why my dad wasn't at the baseball game, wasn't at the football game. It doesn't hurt as much. It doesn't hurt. And you know what's funny is even then it didn't hurt, but that's the part that you don't realize. It's not that it hurt. Because I was like, my dad doesn't like football. Whatever. I'm on the field. I don't give a shit. I'm having fun. My mom was there. My mom was cheering right. and doing Woo! all that shit. Yeah. yeah. But it was like, it didn't hurt, but you don't realize how much it could have helped just for him to be there and say, I love you. I'm proud of you. Right. Or how much it affected you that he wasn't there subconsciously. Right. Yeah. That maybe. you just didn't even know. Yeah. So even though it wasn't an active, painful thing, mm-hmm. the opposite, how much could it have helped? Right. Right. How much so could now it have with kind your put, kid, with yeah. the next version of the software, how do I give that kid all the good updates mm-hmm. sooner than I got them. Right. Because God, like I said, like if you can give your 10-year-old the emotional intelligence you had at 20, 25, 30, whatever. Right. And they can, and that's the one thing I talked to my daughter about. I'm like, hey, like you speak to me always. Mm-hmm. You're la- I want you to tell me how you feel. Right. I want you to tell me what you're feeling, your experience, because communication is the most important thing you will do with any other person in the world. Mm-hmm. And you being able to communicate with me about anything as a six-year-old is the thing that when you're in a relationship, which I didn't get, I was always a bad communicator. I'm a people pleaser. I don't like burdening people. I think that's some more third kid shit. Mm-hmm. I don't like burdening people. Yeah. I, I, I was in and out of the hospital as a kid like eight times for a couple different things. And, and I was in like second grade. And I remember like at one point I was in the hospital for two weeks by myself. And my parents and, like, family friends, like, my mom would come up for two days, and then she'd go back home to the Keys. This is in Miami, so it's, like, an hour and a half drive. My mom would come up for two days, and then my dad would show up, and they'd switch and whatever. And then, like, a family friend would come up for, like, an, a day, and then my mom would come up that night or something. And it was, like, I remember being there and feeling bad that I was this burden upon everybody. Because everybody had to come see Because everybody had yeah. to come do this thing because I – and I had, I had nothing to do with it. I had I have a blood disorder. Uh, they thought I had Crohn's at one point. They I were had being some supportive. other stuff. Yeah. They, yeah, they were taking care of their kid, you know, but fine. But from that point on, anytime I, like me being sick, I don't want anything. Just leave me alone. I'll just sit in the dark. Right. Da, 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 da. I'm not going to ask for help. I'm not going to ask for soup. I'm not going to ask because I don't want to burn. And that's something like, it's not good in relationships. I'll tell you that. Yeah, because it adds and, up. It adds up. And so now I talk to my daughter. I'm like, that. that's my shit. I don't want you to have that. Mm-hmm. You should be able to speak your mind. You should be able to ask for help. So that, like I said, so it's like we're yeah. the software. How do I get her to be a higher level of software and give her all the upgrades I can give her, you know, yeah. as soon as possible? And I forgot how we got on this. But I don't like, know. That's, but, that's, but that's like that's the beautiful thing message, of like yeah. how I look at the kids. Like, that's we how, are the that's, AI. I'm lucky that that's how my mom. So I was the only child and I just grew up paying. My parents had to bring me everywhere. They didn't right. have money for babysitter. They lived in a place where they were in the army. They didn't know anybody. So they would take me to their friend's house where they yeah. would, you know, they weren't like getting hammered. But like that's where they had to go have recreational time. You know what right. I mean? They had to, to be pe- people sane. too. They had to be people. Yeah. So they would take me. I'd be on the couch. Wayne's World's on. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm playing with marbles or something. And the guy's like, hey, kid, what's up? Like their friend. You know what I mean? And so like. So I'm guessing so you grew up being able to talk to adults. That's where I got this. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yep. the that's the only thing that I'm like, I'm not a natural born musician. Like, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? I don't have perfect pitch or whatever. I'm not a painter. Like this is, this is what I, that's why I've started doing this because this is what I, what I'm born with. This mm-hmm. is my gift is I can speak to people and I enjoy it. And so it's like, but my mom would always do the same thing, which is kind of funny because she would let me always have an opinion. 
about things. Like, yeah. you're grounded. <clears throat> you know what I mean? And I'd be like, well, I don't think I should be because this, that, and this. And she'd go, that's really nice. <laughs> and I really want you to have that. But you're grounded. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, I can have an opinion and a, and a point of view even if it didn't matter and it was wrong. Yeah. You know but, what I mean? And, and, so, and it's funny because I do that with my daughter too. I'm like, yeah. you are always, you are, you don't have to agree with everything. Mm -hmm. That is not part of it. I was like, I want like, you are allowed to be angry with me. You're allowed mm -hmm. to be frustrated with the things I say. You're allowed to be frustrated and angry at the things I tell you that needs to be done or I tell you you can't do. That's mm -hmm. fine. And you are allowed to negotiate with me. If you want to make your case, you better make your case. Right. And that's fine because I want you to because again, it's communication. It's, it's, it's putting your your logic your feelings your desires your needs in words and clearly communicating them to the another person and if you don't wanna, get used to that well also yeah. brush your teeth and go to bed yeah <laughs> yeah tie your goddamn shoes we have to go <laughs> yeah like we gotta go exactly like, yeah, yeah 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 all those things you're saying yeah you can Love tell it. me in the car Love we it, gotta kid. go yeah we gotta yeah. go yeah yeah, and that's that's beautiful, and that's a good thing. So that's and the fact that your mom did that. I mean, that's a lot of kids don't get that. My parent, yeah. my dad didn't get that. My dad yeah. got you it. Shut the fuck up. Shut, do yeah, you don't speak until spoken to. Yeah, and I don't care. Yeah, I hope more kids get that as we're becoming parents, people that are you know younger yeah. or whatever. I mean, you're a I think older the than me, but. pendulum swung because then there's this, the whole generation of like where pe people are friends with their kids, mm -hmm. and like I I don't I think there's something to that. Where it's like, it's not to speak when spoken to, but then it went like way too far of like, now the kids don't respect you and the discipline doesn't work. Yeah. And like the kids don't like, like, I mean, so many comments have the jokes of like, fuck you, Karen, like kids cussing at their mouth. Right. Like, no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's also well, like that's... The, the far end of the spectrum that's unacceptable too. Yeah. But the open communication and then the respect of like, this is the line, but you're allowed to push. You're allowed yeah. to push. And I want you to. And the truth is there's been times when I've told my daughter at fucking age five. Where I'm like, hey, da 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 da, and she's like, well, Dad, why this if blah 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 blah? And I've gone, you know what? Good your, point. Your logic checks yeah. out. We will adjust. Go to your room. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Your <laughs> brush well, your teeth, pick a book, it's and almost, then we'll go. It's there. almost kind of like we like you to go to go back to the programming thing that you're talking about with the yeah. updates and the computer and everything. It's like we are like us being better parents and let you know doing all that stuff that you're doing it's almost like like the virus is like the the smartphones and the social media right so that's like the new virus that's destroying like the, that. the current yeah. the current kids that are being you know because yeah. they're going to get smartphones in their hands by age whatever you know what i mean Mo my, dude because, i'm shocked because soon, at how well my daughter as, can use it, my phone yeah as soon as you get to school it's like you're a nerd if you don't have a, you right. know what i mean like yeah, we yeah. didn't have to deal with that but it's, it's like the only way to combat that you know the the Norton antivirus software yeah. is is you being a dope dad and letting her you know do all that right. stuff that the old parents didn't do. Yeah, um, we got to wrap this up because I got to piss. But I do want to <laughs> ask you one more question because this sure. has been this has been great. By the way, so I've really it, enjoyed so it. So introspective. Yeah. It's been amazing talking to you. I uh, hope we can do it again sometime for sure. So let me ask you, um, with all of this self reflection that we've been doing here, mm -hmm. what do you want now? Like the the whole. What do you want? You you said that uh, at thirty you wish you would have you know checked what in with yourself on that. So I'm asking you at forty two, what do you want now? It's great. <laughs> Sorry. It's no no no, I love it. You know what's funny is the it hasn't changed that much. I still look at it and go, I'm gonna be fifty years old driving around the country in a motorhome, mm -hmm. telling jokes. Motorhome airplane, like I'm a pilot. Mm -hmm. I like I I have a dream of owning a plane and flying it from week, you know, show to show. Da be, da da. That would be. It'd sick. be dope. It's a great way to kill yourself too. <laughs> like, like in my mind, I'm like, that's awesome. You're the I'm Amelia like, this Earhart sounds like exactly how musicians and everyone die. Right. Um. But uh, I look at it, and this is this is like where you know tie back in with Derek. Derek sees this path that he's on, and this is it. But he's also in the path of that path. Mm -hmm. The people he's he's in the doing, eye of the storm. He's in the eye of the storm of the people that are fucking Scott, like rocket ships. Yeah. And they're doing that. I look at this and go. Your average comic, not your average, you know, mo most comedian, Derek, Derek has 52 weekends a year, 52 weeks a year. The comedy is the priority. I have 26 because the other 26, my child is the priority. Mm hmm. Now, does that mean I can't do shows? Does that mean I can't ever get a babysitter? No, 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 it doesn't. But 
So now I'm like, my year is in half. Now I have 26 weekends. So if I found a way to be on the road 26 weekends a year, the weekends I don't have my kid, now I'm on the road 26 weekends a year. So that's 100% of the time I don't have my child, I'm doing that. Well, that's not practical either. So what does that mean? That means how do I figure out how to do this, how to do comedy? And also like I'm, and, and again, like I said in the beginning, comic creates boundaries. Are you standing there with a microphone saying words? Yeah, are you yeah. not moving? Yeah. But also like when I picture, and I don't know if you've done this, but like I've pictured my Schultz Arena tour. I did it with that band that took us on tour. Yeah. I've pictured what I, you yeah. know what mine has? Mine has fucking backup dancers and cheerleaders and all this shit that was a part of my life. Like right. I have so many You're a theater more. Kid. <sighs> Careful with that <laughs> shit. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I can turn it off. I know. Um, <laughs> but like I look at it and I'm like, me standing with a microphone is not all I want this to be. And there was a quote from a really good documentary. If you ever saw it, it was, uh, I forget where it was, but it was a documentary about The Tonight Show and Johnny Carson. And it was the first night of The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson and Ed McMahon. And they literally like pitched this idea to the network. We're going to do this. We're going to go out there. We got a, 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 a desk and chairs and Ed's the co-host and we're going to have people on and da, da And they're standing behind the curtain literally 45 seconds before the show. The first ever show is going to be recorded. And Ed turns to Johnny Carson and says, what are we doing? Like what, like, what are we doing? And Johnny Carson looked at him and just said, I don't know. Let's just go out there and entertain the hell out of these people. Yeah. And that sentence burnt a hole in my brain of like, I don't know what this is. And you don't need to. I don't need to. And that's where like, are you a comic? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Am I also just a performer in general? Is it like, I look at Berbiglia. Well, Berbiglia, is he a comic or is he a guy that does one man shows? Mm -hmm. where's the line where's the gray area i don't know all of it sounds awesome so yeah. Derek is very much in like this is comedy and he's in it he's in that sphere of the right. fucking rockets and well, he sees like he's microphone late, he's on having stage. late night conversations with the best who have ever done it you know what's interesting too is he, it's not even that he's he is having that while also he's in the room while the best of the best are having the conversations with each other yeah. about oh, how it's I done. He's a fly that. on the wall in rooms that would blow your goddamn mind. Right. And he and he talked about he's like, dude, I sit in rooms silent. Mm -hmm. I know he's like, buddy, there is no reason for me to talk in a room with some of the people I'm in the room with because I have nothing to contribute to this conversation. Right. Yes. But I am the luckiest guy in the world to be because they person. ask me to be in the room mm -hmm. and I get to listen and observe. That's the most self-aware shit. I and love, that's Derek, I love dude. That. Derek is self-aware as fuck. I love and that. And I love it. He seems so, so cool. He's, he's just, I mean, he is he is 100% raw love and honesty and it's hard. Like I said, that conversation last night got to a point where I was like, is he silently asking me to leave his house? Yeah. Because I'm supposed to be, I'm my, my bag is in the, the I'm not working yeah. hard enough. And, and the truth is, it's not that. No. But I look at it and I'm like, I'm on, like we said before, I'm on my journey. Mm -hmm. I don't know what this will be, but I I envision backup dancers it's in the a Tonight fucking music you. interlude. Yeah. We don't it's, know. I don't know. But mm -hmm. I my goal, I'm going to make a living that works for me so I can be the dad I want to be while also entertaining the hell out of as many people as I can do. And having fun. Not working in that construction office. Yeah. Not being, not, I, dude, I've, not I've, I've wondering I've what you want. I've poured do. concrete. I've built houses. I've dug ditches. None of it's fun. I've, I've spent literally 12 hours a day in a 24 foot manhole drilling and pumping grout and solving problems and fixing leaks. Like I have put in real fucking work. Mm -hmm. I've done it. Yeah. I'm going to choose to entertain the hell out of these people. It's more fun. And, and in my mind, I'm going to make it work how I need it to work to be the dad I want to be and live the life I want to live and entertain the hell of these people. So it's like, it's not that different. If anything, it's just broader than that first, right. first time I thought about it. Well, I have it's it's like the opportunities are bigger. And, and I think you'll, I think you'll get there just fine, dude. I think you, you know, I think you, and I that's think the you thing want, is like, you want it, dude. So the Derek think... thing hit me because it, where it really hit me was can't, should and can I be doing more? Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. 100%. 
one hundred percent. And that's where like that's you know, what I'm taking from this. Yeah, personally. Yeah, my situation is different than yours. But do I need to feel guilty that I'm not doing it the way Derek's doing it? No, no. But also, should I have the expectation that I'm going to be doing it the, this at the pace and growing and building and whatever the the levels of success are mm-hmm. that my friends that are doing it the way they're doing it are doing it? No, and I should be okay with that, even though it's hard. Even though you see your friends pulling away and you're like... You're doing arenas with Schultz is just going to look different. Yeah. And it's going to come at a different time. Yeah. And that's fine. And that's totally fine. Yeah. Because also when I look at my kid, at no point she's going to be like, where have you been? And also, if you can just channel that, what he was trying to say, I think here might be a piece to the puzzle. It's like if you can channel what he was trying to say and like that grind that he's trying to inspire... And just do that as hard as you can when you can while when you can while being the same the right. the, the the dad you have to be then there's that's 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 an A plus that, there's right. nothing there's no better you can do that's a hundred that's a hundred percent great right so while I understand his frustration in hearing these are all excuses of why you're not all in right and I get that point of view too absolutely but I got to live my life. And we all got to live our lives, and you got to live your life. And whether your band comes out and does it and is willing to do what they want to do, what, I hope know. they do. We could it could be overnight for us, if right, right now. Get out has. here! Get out get here, boys! Out here. Listen to James. Listen to the doctor. What are Listen you to doing? Doctor Squatch. Wash your balls. Get out here! <laughs> all right, James. I love dude, you, brother. Thank, thank you so you much, so much for doing so this. Fun. And uh, I feel like I made a friend today. So yeah, thank you so much, sure. dude. Thank you. Were you doing anything tonight? Uh, uh, where am I? T- I'm, I got shows like this whole week. I'll this camera right here. Do this. And this will come out in like a week or two. So. Oh, then it doesn't matter what I'm doing tonight. Okay. But uh, the in beauty of being Diego, in, in Austin is uh, is that there's just so much stage time. And, and the mm-hmm. truth is this scene is like welcome me with open arms. They're really and, nice. Yeah, they're so nice. Even to the newbies. Even to the newbies. Yeah. And that, yeah, it's a fucking family in this town. It's really kind of cool. Um, but uh, check out jamesschrader.com. I update it almost enough. And uh, but go there, and there's things happening. And are you doing anything when you get home that you want to plug specifically? If anybody uh, watches this, San like- Diego, I am headlining the Madhouse Comedy Club March 15th and 16th, and uh, look out for my podcast, which will be launching soon. Let's be human. Ooh. Uh, you can I saw a picture me. of the setup. It looks cool. It's a fun little. It's a fun little set. Maybe I can come do it. I'd love that. I'd love that. Once or we I'm can do one here on. while I'm here. I, I want to try yeah. to record. My, I've got six m- more days, and I want to try to record a, a number of people so we can me, talk about that. Me but. casa su casa. Muchas gracias. Hell yeah, brother! Thank you Thank so you, much. Dude. Run that outro, Thank Matias. You. Outro us. You are listening to Gorgas, you idiot.